last time on Indy 180. Tonight we are third bear. I give props where props are due. I, there are so many stations that I love because of what they're doing and helping. Dude, Metal Syndicate, get the fuck out of here. There's nobody better in this state than the Metal Syndicate. Bull Spike Radio out of New York. Two brothers with fucking muscular dystrophy who fucking rock harder than any of you. I of Anubis calling in from New Jersey. And uh, we're going to talk to them about the band and about Shore Metal Madness Fest, which is coming up, Joe. And I cannot fucking wait, bro. If I have Anubis could go out on tour with any band, dead or alive, who do you guys go out on tour with? Uh, fucking Bach, man. OFNR, Indy 180, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Getting classical in this motherfucker. Yeah, that's my fault. It's Eugene. Sorry, I didn't. That's my fault. See, when we recorded it, I it got a lot of hand. It was tequila, and you know, once you get furry animals and tequila involved, you don't know what's gonna go into a fucking microphone. Tuesday night, 8 p.m. It is time for Indie 180. How much time do we have? 180 minutes of rock and metal featuring the Monolithic Music Minute. Interviews with independent bands from all over the world. My name is Martin Alini from the floor, from Holland. Hello, America. This is Finnish Hans called a Music in X. G'day, this is Matt Seberg, and you're listening to the official FN Radio. So much better. Are there FN Radio stations? And Knobs News Corner. Brought to you in part by Blow Pig. Don't let another blissful moment go to waste. Taste the magic of Blow Pig. And Cold Cock Whiskey. Take your shot. Hosted by Joe Stagger, Brian Almeida from The Shape, and of course, me, Bob, on the motherfucking knob. The clock is ticking, and the show is about to begin. Yes, indeed, Rudy. It's Tuesday fucking night, 8 p.m., 8.03 to be exact. You guys get your time correct, Bob. Sorry, man. This whole, like, daylight savings thing has got me all fucking out of whack. Yeah, I hate that fucking shit. They need to get rid of it. Since when are we a fucking country of farmers still? Well, not only that, dude, but time is uh, is a myth. It's a man-made thing, man. It's, <laughs> yes, I prefer floating through the day. I mean, I like the fact that when I'm getting out of work, it's not fucking dark. And I like the fact that when I'm going to work, it's not totally fucking dark. It's still dark, but it's not like pitch dark. You know what I mean? Not, it doesn't feel like I'm... I, I don't going. know, man. I, I tend to go to work in the dark and come home in the dark. And it, sometimes it doesn't matter what fucking time of year it is. Right. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need, like... I'm not a big fan of the sunlight to begin with, but sometimes uh, you just need a little bit. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. You can see how this is bad for Keith. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. This is gonna go real, real, real bad for him. So, dead. so anyway, uh, it's fish fucking your radio. It's Tuesday night, three ten, March the tenth, twenty fifteen. We got Josh from Fear the Masses. Tune in. We're live. And, yeah, uh, we are. As you heard, be, you know, from the start there, last time on Indy 180, we had I of Anubis. So thank you, guys. I of Anubis had a really great time, really good conversation. I love listening back to that stuff and making yeah, those little la- those little last time breakers. Dude, I really like. I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, that came out really well. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Those guys are a pisser. Yeah, it definitely was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Eugene. That kid is a cartoon character. But every time I see him on stage, that's like the first time we saw them was down in Atlantic City. And it was like literally watching a cartoon character. 
Right. Uh, he's so he, he is. He's just physically animated when he sings. It's great. And he's got like a really big fro now. So it's even funnier. Nice. Of course, Indy 180 brought to you by uh, Cold Cock Whiskey, made with aged American bourbon, herbs like green tea, hibiscus, eucalyptus, ginger, ginkgo, and many others. Smooth taste, no whiskey burn. Take your shot. ColdCockWhiskey.com. I'll be taking my shot shortly. And of course, also brought to you by Blow Paste. Unlike most lubricants that have uh, preservatives and aspartame, Blow Paste is a simple way to keep your mouth clean and fresh while doing the deed. You can also use blow paste for massage, lip gloss, and of course, hand jobs. That's right, hand jobs. Blow paste is cock out of your mouth. (laughs) Blow paste is good for any cavity. Substitute your toothbrush with a dick. Get a blow job a day with blow paste. Cheekychacha.com, and take the taste of dick out your mouth once (laughs) and for all. What a great invention, dude! The best thing ever, right? I mean. I heard about this via the Bagman, dude. We we came across her by total accident. She was one of our news stories, dude. Oh, that's funny. And I was like, I need to reach out and find out more about this product. And we had Jasmine Ejean on. That's awesome. I must touch the cheeky cha-cha. Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 Oh man, I can't wait for this interview. Saturday, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, Saturday. Oh yeah, well, I guess we should talk about that, right? Before we talk, mm-hmm. before we talk about things that are coming up tonight, we have we have Josh, and um, yeah, I got something to play for you, Joe. You want to hear this? And I'm gonna play it again when Josh calls in. Okay, but you got to check this out here real quick. Indy 180, only here on Off and Off Forever. Next Tuesday, March 10th, Joshua Moore, Fear the Masses. If you guys missed last week, Joe and I have made a decision on this. And I'm standing by this, Joe. All right. Next week, we have Josh from Fear the Masses and his introduction to me, hey, yo, bitch, I want to get on the show. And so I think in retribution, we're going to do a anything but Fear the Masses show. Yes. I I think it's the best thing ever. We're going to talk to Josh about anything but Fear the Masses. Just completely ignore he's in a band. (laughs) We are not going to talk about Fear the Masses at all. Not once. Not once. March 10th, 2015. Joshua Moore of Anything But Fear the Masses on Indie Mobile. That's tonight. That's such a great spot. Oh, thank you. That's so funny, man. Well, listen, man, you know, I love the guy and he loves me and it's it's all about love and respect and dude, it's off and R. It's off and R. You know, we like to have a little bit of fun every now and again. God damn it. We're we have more fun than the norm. I'm not that old that I can't have fun anymore, god damn it. Gotta keep them peppers running, keep the fun going. So yeah, tonight we're really going to fuck with Josh, man. It's going to be a really good time. And, you know, we warned him, dude. I, I, we warned him two weeks in a row. Yeah. Not our fault he doesn't listen. No, he should be listening. Then he'd be prepared, but it's even better that he's not. Saturday, March 14th. This fucking Saturday, March 14th. Shore Metal Madness Fest, New Jersey 3. Off and of course, going to be there, be there, be there. And uh, MC in the event. I'm coming down with Continuum. It's going to be awesome. I cannot fucking wait. Yes. Holy shit. And uh, Holy shit is correct. Man. God damn duty. No oh, man. Um, this week just needs to go. Yeah, it's only Tuesday, bro. Uh, thanks for reminding me once again. Speaking of Tuesday, next week, March 17th, is St. Patty's Day. We're going to have Adam Grayer of Cold Cock Whiskey. How fitting. How the fucking day of alcohol. fitting. We have a man of alcohol. Right? And I think, I, if I heard correctly, there's a place here in Connecticut now, in Naugatuck, that sells Cold Cock. So I may go and grab myself some for that evening. Really, in Naugatuck? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Lightspans was telling me about it. They got one of the 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 the, the, the stores down there to sell fucking you know to help out the spreading of cold cock whiskey, man. You know. Well, then that shit should be at Cooks for the second installment of Shore Metal Madness. I'm saying. 
especially I will have since, to especially since, since, especially since Light Spain's there, you know. Boom. Yeah, I'm not doing it for them. <laughs> I'm doing it for me. <laughs> of course, Tuesday, March 24th, Ethan Murphy, Scars of Envy, and other projects. Goddamn dude works like a crazy person. <laughs> I think he may be a crazy person. A little bit. Saturday, March 28th, Shore Metal Madness Fest again! Yeah. Connecticut version. Connecticut style. Cook's Cafe, holy fuck. Decimation. Yeah, Decimation is going to be taken down, man. They just won a uh, Best Bar, I think, award from the uh, Metal Fortress. From yeah, the- I saw that, man. Congrats to Cook's. Congrats to Cook's, absolutely. It's a cool place, there's no doubt. And then uh, on the 7th of April... Adam Lopez, good dear friend of Off and Ours, longtime friend. He's a he's a manager of bands, like actual touring, like band. That's what he does for a living, and uh, he can give us some total insight, man, about what we've been talking about the last couple months about the industry and shit, Joe. So he asked if he could be on. I was like, well, fuck yeah, Adam. It's been a long time since we caught up, and who better fitting than somebody who's actually in the industry doing this kind of stuff? Love how we're hitting all different aspects of Every it. angle, brother. Every angle. Then, of course, the following week, the 14th, courtesy of Mr. Joe Stagger himself, the Old Bridge Metal Militia, going to be on our airwaves. Ooh, you're not going to want to miss this one. No. Amazing, guys. I've never seen such a group of people be so supportive of bands. I mean, and I mean, they're metalheads through and through. They support music. And they've been supporting it since, like, you know, back in the early 80s. I mean, these guys used to house Metallica when they were coming over here as kids. You know, putting them up in their houses and feeding them. And, I mean, it's that kind of... They're those kind of people. They've got a lot of history behind them. And it's uh, another side of the scene that a lot of people don't see or, you know, don't recognize like they should. So, be very cool. Fuck yeah, man. And of course, you still got openings in April, so if you are in a band, know a band, in a record label, any of that stuff, man, we're more than happy. I love talking to you guys. That's really why I do this. I'm learning along with you guys. I mean, I don't know any of I don't have all the answers. Joe, you certainly don't have all the answers. No, I have Uh, no answers. We we are learning. I want the creator of Dildo Hats on the air with us. So that's how you get... uh, that's what we got coming up for everybody uh, keeping it locked. <coughs> Check that out. Of course, um, we should do the band name generator, dude. Yes. We should get our band name. And this week, uh, I'm going to get this thing rolling here, Joe. And I would ask that you just let me know when you want me to stop. And anytime you want me to stop, go now. Anytime you want me to stop. All right, I'm thinking about it. I'm uh, still thinking about it. How was your day? Oh, it was pretty good. Yeah? yeah Stop. Okay. Today we are Blue Music. <laughs> that is our band name today. Blue Music. Blue Music. Blue Music. Well, blue. That's an odd name. What, you want a mulligan again? That'd be two weeks in no, a row. No, I'm just saying it's an odd name. It's just weird. It is kind of strange. I'll do one mulligan on this. Just yeah, one. Yeah, you want to do a mulligan? Just one. All right. Last week, we got out of hand. We were doing like three, I think. Yeah, well, because they were just getting weird. So, okay. Anytime you're ready, anytime you're ready, anytime you're ready, anytime you're ready. Stop. Male soup. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're male soup. That's awesome. Joe, are you there? Joe? Joseph? Joey? Joe Einstein. I've lost Joe. Joe!
I lost Joe. I don't know what's going on here. I'm trying to do many things at once. It's not working out. Let me see if I can get him back on the line. See that? Hmm. We're going to take a quick music break. Tonight we're going to play mostly stuff from the Shore Metal Madness Fest coming up. One of the uh, bands I'm really excited to see. Oh, here we go. Hang on a second. See? I, yeah, I'm... Fuck. Joe, you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. See, I have a, an issue because now my my speaker, like the music, has gone down. Like it's it's uh it's so weird. We never had this problem before. Like the music dropped out. Like no, the music. Like because I'm on the Skype with you, the music got all fucking quiet. Well, that's weird because we're always on Skype. Here, hang on a second. Uh, let's see if this works. Nope. Fuck my life. Okay. Uh, see, it's so weird. I got to figure out why it's doing that. Anyway, it's official fucking new radio. It is. What is it? Disconnecting? No, wanna... no, no. Like, um, the audio here gets turned down. Like, I don't know. I can't explain it. It just, it gets lowered. The, the, like the, the room audio. Huh. Yeah. It's like just all of a sudden, like we never had this problem before. No. That's very strange. Indeed it is. Indeed. Indubitably. Indeed it is. Anywho, what That's were funny. we what were we talking about? Our uh, band name. Oh yeah. We we're blue we're male soup tonight. Male soup. Yep. It's our band it's name. Good male soup. No soup for you. No soup for you. That's our first fucking album right there. Yep. That's an, uh, I like that name. I don't know why. Male soup? Yeah. <laughs> it's disturbing on the right level. It has a... Uh, you, you can look at it in many different ways. Really, no, you can't, but... It's weird. So I have a question for you. Okay. Have you seen all these videos popping up about turtles having sex? Turtles having sex with, like, boots and shit? Boots each other. I mean, I, yeah, I've seen, I've seen, uh, seen turtles having sex. If you're, if you're asking me, yeah, yeah, I've seen some turtles having sex. Sure. At the zoo, I'm just wondering and, why all of a sudden it's become so popular to post turtles having sex. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm as baffled as you. Because someone posted one the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact, it, it had me almost fucking pissing my pants. That's how odd it was. I'll have to post it to the page later. It's it's just freaking hysterical. But I don't understand it. It's just all of a sudden. I, just, I was just wondering, you know, thought it was just me. You know, thought yeah. it's, you know, seen quite a few odd things lately. Strange events, strange occurrences. Yeah. It all started with that girl having sex with the tree. It's just, it's gone weird. So, all right, what time are we looking at here? I, I, I'm, I'm so excited for him to call in. I can't wait. <laughs> it's 820. Oh. All right. We should. What? You want to do some music? Yeah, we should just come and call now. I can't wait. I want to fuck with him so bad. <laughs> all, all right. right so what do we got? we got on tap now? All right. I got, uh, I got two different things. I got the, uh. Optimistic, uh, optimistic music industry CEO discussion, or okay. we can talk about how streaming is the next coming of music. Mm. Which would you rather? Streaming and coming. <laughs> <laughs> I must go with streaming and coming. Yeah, yeah. Streaming and coming. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> Oh. Streaming is the next coming of music. According to FT.com, and uh, once it loads here, it says, Will streaming save the music industry? This is written by Matthew Garahan. Digital downloads, once seen as the salvation of a music industry ravaged by online piracy and falling CD sales, are in decline, and record labels are worried. 
I'd say they're shitting their pants. I would too. Amid great promise, downloads became the way to listen to music, but a decade of growth came to a shuddering halt in 2014, and sales were set to fall further this year. Enter streaming. <laughs> you know, the thing that's been going on for fucking ever. OFNR has been streaming since yeah. fucking 2006, 24 7, streaming. So I don't know why it's all of a sudden it's such a big thing, but however. Companies like Spotify and Apple and Google, the big motherfuckers, you know, the the behemoths, yeah. are betting fans will migrate to new services that give listeners all the music they want to hear for a fixed monthly price. So instead of going out and buying a CD, you'd have a playlist of CDs for a monthly fee. It'd right, be, which it'd they already like, have out now. It'd be like Netflix. Yeah, but for music. It's, but- it's music flicks, yeah. Yeah, Without like the, Slacker you know, does that. I mean, you you can pay a monthly fee for Slacker to get like the premium choices, right? Like to build like an infinite playlist, right? But I mean, we 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 have streaming rights, and you actually get paid a little better on the streaming rights than you do on the sales. Well, sure, sure. Um, I, I mean, absolutely. Well, and it depends too. But see, there's so much controversy when it comes to you know because of these huge outrageous numbers that are being done by like spotify you know i i'd like to know joe you know and this has never been looked at and and maybe i guess i'm gonna have to do the looking if anyone has ever looked at how much money bands are getting from fm stations because there's all this hoopla about how much money they're getting from fucking spotify and how much money they're getting from Pandora and how much money they're getting from this person and that person. Well, uh, FM radio is is a streaming service. I mean, I don't give a fuck. Who's yeah, there. but see, that falls under ASCAP. Yeah, but so then, so should streaming. Get, but so should streaming, yeah, but, dude, dude. I have a streaming license, dude. I I I pay royalties. Yeah, but it's weird. It's from how I understand it, your streaming rights, your your FM plays, only count through ASCAP or. Um, What's the other one? I forget now. BMI. Uh, BMI. They they only sh- they those are the only ones that pick up the rights for payments. Anything that's digital streaming, like whether it's your phone, your iPad, your computer, right. whatever, that goes like a pure streaming. And I, I can give you an example. Like I just got like a a little we get a check every few weeks put into our account for our streaming and it divides it up by songs. So we had one song that was over the last two weeks was streamed 30 times and we got 21 cents for it. Rolling in dough. Rolling. But it's weird. I had, uh, this happened to me last month. I had two songs. One was, streamed uh 110 times and one was streamed 140 times the one that was streamed 140 times we got paid less on by like 20 something cents and i couldn't figure it out and i'm like looking and looking what you know what it was it was the time difference in the songs it's the only thing i can come up with because one song was longer than other it's a longer stream. Other than that, I got no clue. I could be talking out my ass, but I that's the only thing I could come up with logically that the two songs were, you know, different in time. They were like uh, f- almost 45 seconds uh, difference in time. Right. That's the only thing that I could come up with. But it paid differently for more. It paid less for more of a stream. It's very interesting. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I get these numbers, it's like every two and a half, three weeks. And it, you know, it breaks, like I said, breaks it all down so you can see what's getting the most plays and, you know, but it, it's just weird because Spotify is like our our thing. I mean, we get played left and right on Spotify. You're beating um, off guys with both hands. Yeah. Um, You know, we get a Good, good amount on Google. Um, iTunes, 
we do more sales on iTunes than we do streaming. Because iTunes is weird for streaming. They only let you stream certain things. It's like 30 seconds and yeah. Yeah, so people are just doing samples. But even with like Slacker, um, you know, it's up and down because they're almost channel related versus like Spotify where you can kind of go in and just get what you want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird setup. I mean, I don't know if I see it as the future. It's the now, dude. It's what's happening. And this is yeah. why there's so many artists that are like Taylor Swift removing their stuff from Spotify because they're seeing that they're not getting as much um, money or whatever, for whatever reason. You know, maybe it's a volume thing. You know, they get so well, that's what I That's what I think. I think the bigger, more accessible mainstream stuff is not going to get streamed. People will still go out and buy them on iTunes. It, there's so much accessibility for more obscure bands and indie bands to get their music streamed. That's what's being streamed. It's not so much the, the the majors out there that are being streamed. People are just buying their tunes. But streaming is like the independent savior. If that makes any sense. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's it's that you know that's like our thing, you know, because anybody can do it. You know, through you get packages through websites where you can stream on a hundred and different, you know, like a hundred different, you know, uh, stations or whatever. And uh, that's our accessibility to the mainstream world. It's not so great for mainstream bands right. because that, they live on iTunes. Right. And that's why they're seeing their iTunes, you know, go well, but not their streaming where we have the reverse we see our streaming really going well and like itunes you know it's a hit or miss we get our sales but we're not doing millions of sales like they are you know so that's why they're pulling out of it because it, it just doesn't pay for them here hang on a second i'm gonna call you right back okay okay i think i figured this fucking shit out once and for all let's hope You there? Here. Yeah, I figured it out. It was some fucking setting that I guess a Windows update must have changed. Oh. Uh, Which is always lovely when they do that kind of stuff. Yeah, don't notify you. Makes me, you know, you know. Makes me angry. Angry. I'm an angry man. Consumer behavior shifting, global digital downloads of albums slipped 9% in 2014. Sales of individual tracks fell 12, according to Nielsen Music. And uh, around the world, demand for streaming services is increasing. Why is that? Because everyone's got a fucking cell phone, man. They don't want to have to, you know, every time they get a new cell phone, they got to change their fucking library over. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Thankfully, the library follows your phone now. Technology groups are launching competing music streaming services on the lookout for exclusive deals. One record executive commented, think about it, Google, Apple, Spotify, and others are conversing on this space. And what do they need? Our music. So it's like Apple's unusually given its size. Pedigree is an underdog in all this because of how it was set up, just like you were saying earlier, Joe. So, yeah. I mean, it's crazy, dude. It, uh, you know, this is what's happening. And, and again, yeah, I just, again, it, I, it, it I pains see it me. lasting. It pains me because, you know, the tangibility factor it was something, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't see this. I, I don't know how long this streaming versus, you know, how long it's going to last because, you know, there's going to be someone out there that comes up with something completely different. But, I mean, it's got some staying power, I can say that. Well, you think about it like this, dude. Like, uh, iTunes is, for instance. Dude, the Apple just put out a brand new iWatch. Dude, you could, have, right. you could have your music coming out of your iWatch, you know what I mean? Like, at this point, it's crazy. But the funny part is, is they're behind the eight ball on that one because Samsung had it out a year and a half ago. Oh, right. The watch to go with your phone. 
So I can do, you know, my phone can hold a ton of music if I wanted to. Just all I need is the memory card for it. And I can hold, there's no limit. As long as they can make bigger memory cards, I can hold. And I have the same storage capabilities as an iPhone, everything, or more. But I still say my phone sounds better. You know, like, you know, I was doing it through the watch. I was testing it out. And it, it, it's, it's freaky how good it sounds. But, I mean, really, what are you going to be walking down the street streaming from your watch? You know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, man. But, I mean, this whole, you know, this conglomerate of companies that are, you know, a part of this whole streaming thing, I mean, I don't see it ending soon, but I do see it not having, like, like the end-all be-all. There'll always be something new, but... They've definitely got some staying power right now because it makes it easier. Much. Yeah, much easier. And the more independent bands and smaller bands that get on there, you know, like on smaller indie labels and stuff, get on there, the more popular it's going to stay. Well, sure. And iTunes either has to adapt or get out. Yep. Is what it's going to come down to because they're just going to have to become a strict sales site and take away even the preview streaming because what it's going to come down to is you're going to have your sales on iTunes people are going to listen to your songs on those other sites and then go and buy it yeah well and see those other sites aren't going to let that go on for too long no because they'll eventually probably come up with something that allows you to buy from those sites a license or something yeah right but like right now you can go on Google Plus and buy music Sure. As well sure. as stream it. So there's going to be that happy medium in there. It's going to end up leaving iTunes in the dark. If they you don't know, if they don't evolve. I, I, you know, without Steve Jobs being a part of it, I don't know what their evolution capability is on certain things. Right. Because he was the one who really just kind of said, you know, we need to be here. Look how late they are coming out with this watch versus everybody else who did it. Yeah, right. I mean, that's not normal for Apple. They're usually ahead of the game on everything. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a huge Apple fan, but some of their products are just beyond reproach. I mean, you know, iPads are just sweet as hell. I like <laughs> shaved pushy. <laughs> All right, let's but take I a just- quick little music break, bro. We'll come back and we'll uh, we'll talk about our other little topic here: optimistic uh, yeah. optimism in the music industry. A little, you know, uh, maybe a little po- more positive approach. Just okay. From TechCrunch, things Sounds aren't good. things aren't so bad. This came out March eighth from uh, Shmuel Shmuel CEO. Shmuel. We'll talk about that when we get back. We also got Josh Moore of Anything uh, But Fear the Masses. Yes, we do. Am I right on that? Yes, you are. You are correct. All right. It's it. All Official right. Life and Radio, Indy 180. Don't go anywhere. Josh will be on okay. about 9 o'clock. And uh, if you got a request, hey, give us a call, 203-794-6367, 203-794-OFNR. But wait till we're back on the air. Still, yeah, got tickets, wait. still got tickets to give away to Chasm, too. I don't understand why people don't want free shit, Joe. I don't know, man. People are stupid. It's kind of silly. I- that's a kick-ass show. Priapism, Ly- fucking Lyra, fucking Curse the Sun, and Chasm. They're fucking one-time only show. Yes. Yeah. I mean... And those guys are huge supporters of all things independent music, man. Yes, they are. They should be supported. Absolutely. So we'll be back in just a little bit. It's all for our Indie 180. Joe and myself. My name is Nob, of course. I don't I'm think, Joe. I don't think I uh, introduced us earlier. I don't remember. Hello, motherfuckers. Oh. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Okay. I like it pink and wet. <laughs> Who doesn't? We'll be back. All right. Next Tuesday, 
March 10th, Joshua Moore, Fear the Masses. If you guys missed last week, Joe and I have made a decision on this. And I'm standing by this, Joe. All right. Next week, we have Josh from Fear the Masses. And his introduction to me, hey, yo, bitch, I want to get on the show. And so... I think in retribution, we're going to do a anything but Fear the Masses show. Yes. I, I think it's the best thing ever. We're going to talk to Josh about anything but Fear the Masses. Just completely ignore he's in a band. <laughs> we are not going to talk about Fear the Masses at all. Not once. Not once. March 10th, 2015. Josh Moore of anything but Fear the Masses on Indie Yeah.
tonight we are third bear. I give props where props are due. I, there are so many stations that I love because of what they're doing and helping. Dude, Metal Syndicate, get the fuck out of here. There's nobody better in this state than the Metal Syndicate. Bull Spike Radio out of New York, two brothers with fucking muscular dystrophy who fucking rock harder than any of you. I of Anubis calling yeah. in from New Jersey and uh, we're going to talk to them about the band and about Shore Metal Madness Fest which is coming up Joe and I cannot fucking wait bro if I have Anubis could go out on tour with any band dead or alive who do you guys go out on tour with uh fucking Bach man OFNR Indie 180 Tuesday nights 8pm getting classical in this motherfucker it's Eugene. Sorry, I didn't. That's my fault. See, when we recorded it, I it got a lot of hand. It was tequila, and you know, once you get furry animals and tequila involved, you don't know what's gonna go into a fucking microphone. Yes, indeed, it is the Radio Evolution, the official fucking new radio, OFNR forever. Needy deedy. Yes, indeedy weedy. You just heard fucking Eye of Anubis with Irrational Bloodbath. Of course, they were on our show last week, as you heard in that little clip there. It was a great show. If you missed it, it's up on the YouTube channel on the playlist. Go check that shit out on official fucking your radio, dude. Over 75,000 views total can't be wrong. No, it definitely cannot. For that, of course, Continuum hits the pavement first time for Continuum to hit the uh, Shore Metal Madness and not the first time that they've been to Jersey but they're gonna fucking terrorize dude it's gonna be awesome yeah man fucking Cyperna go fucking Gates of Ivory holy shit now you guys are not gonna believe this shit but this is just two guys but this is the most brutal two dudes that I've ever fucking seen play Uh, I fuck I'm so excited to see them of course, uh, Scars of Envy, Stagger, uh, I Have Anubis, Paralysis. God damn, dude. Um, Cyperna. Did I say that already? I don't know. Say it twice. Shit, I'll say it three fucking times or four fucking times. I don't give a shit. Cyperna, you, Cyperna, sir, Cyperna. can go fuck yourself. Cyperna. You don't get reacquainted. You get reinfected. Yep. So, and I'm sure I missed a few others, but dude, this weekend's gonna be baller. Uh, it's gonna be insane. I can't wait, bro. I really can't. You know what I mean? It's been such a long time since I've like just gone out and had you know, a like a metal event. Like, dude, I went to the Kinetic Acoustic Metal. That was an awesome show. And I'm so glad I was there, and I'm so glad I have the audio. But I need like a metal event now. You know what I mean? Well, and I heard I, the Department of Heavy Metal Awareness has issued a warning uh, for the New Jersey area. Joe, I don't know if you knew this, bro. I'd heard something about it. Yeah, I uh, let me see if I can find this. Hang on a second. Um, shit, I, I thought I had this right in front of me, but I guess I don't. Put your glasses on. Put my glasses. Put my glasses. Put your glasses on. Put your glasses. Put your glasses on, on sir. Uh, fuck. What was I? Oh, look, I what was I looking I for? My, uh, the uh, Department of Heavy Metal Awareness. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. It's probably a he- yes. Thank you. Department of Heavy Metal Awareness, folks, has put out a warning. Department of Heavy Metal Awareness warning. ELE level warning has been issued for Long Branch, New Jersey. Hang on a second. I should I should do this all like official, like. Yeah, you should explain the ELE for you know for the common folk. Uh, hang on a second. I, I thought I had a good mu- news bed here, but I guess I, I guess I don't. You don't. You don't have it. I don't what have is it. Wrong with you? I don't know. I don't know what is wrong. What you is- should get it together right now. So, <laughs> all right. Breaking news, official FN Radio, OFNR, the Department of Heavy Metal Awareness, has issued an ELE, Extinction Level Event, 
Warning has been issued for Long Branch, New Jersey and the surrounding areas for March 14th, 2015. High levels of debauchery can be expected. Involuntary neck spasms and flailing limbs may occur with higher probability near the epicenter. This system has a high concentration of kick-ass and should not be underestimated. Expect, uh, expect gale force drums to pound the area throughout the day and into the evening hours. This is not a test. There you go. Department of Heavy Metal Awareness. Go check them out on Facebook. And let us, you know, let them know if, if you've got a show that you think they should look into and, you know, maybe they can check their radar and shit. You know what I mean? Joe? Joe? I can hardly hear you, Joe. Nope, can't hear you. Better? A little. Little? There it is. Hey, there now I is. can now I can hear you again. It could be because I'm getting buzzed up too. You're getting buzzed up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Fucking why not? It's Tuesday. Interesting that you said that. And why is that, sir? Cold cock whiskey, made with aged American bourbon and herbs like green tea, hibiscus, eucalyptus, ginger, ginkgo, and many more. Smooth taste. No whiskey burn. Take your shot. Coldcockwhiskey.com Shameless plug. Shameless plug. All right, let's do our other... Uh, we got a couple minutes before Josh calls in. Yay! <coughs> Excuse I'm me. I'm so giddy about this, it's not even funny. And uh, I've got uh, a little optimism here in the music industry. Maybe things aren't as bad as they seem. This from TechCrunch.com. Just from the other day, in fact, the 8th. So this is quite recent. Quite recent. Smool CEO Jeff Smith is weirdly optimistic about the music industry. It's not a sentiment you hear very often, but uh, Jeff Smool not says later. that uh, social music apps like Sing, Karaoke are up 40 million compared to 21 million in 2013 and now 350,000 paying subscribers from a monthly active base. And then I guess he goes on to say that it's easy to blame the record industry, uh, their decline on piracy and transition to digital music. He suggests that there are other culprits. He says that the bigger issue, issue for the music industry is they never controlled their distribution to the customer. And I think he's really onto something here in the sense that, man, we aren't stupid. You know, we know CDs don't cost 20 bucks. You know? Yeah. And and at a time when people were really looking for cash, man, you know, 20 bucks or 18 bucks or 16.99, 15, sometimes you get them for 11. <coughs> Dude, yeah. a, a CD doesn't cost that much to make, man. Maybe at first they did. Now it's it's nothing. I mean... So yeah. Sm Smith is uh, actually interested in data on how people engage with music. So it's the in actual engagement of listening rather than downloads or streams. It's the engagement of like they're listening and checking out the band and maybe making seeing if there's a tour date near them, you know what I'm saying? Right, so he wants to know the overall. Yeah. And uh, he con contrasted the record industry's approach with Apple, and he suggested that the company was used to audience data to improve distribution, which in turn improves the data, and naturally, that's what he's trying to do. It's smooth. And uh, I, I don't know how he's going to get all that information. I mean, he has to take such a large sample to get an accurate reading. He's going to be interviewing people forever. He's achieved growth, uh, all the growth that he's had of uh, 10 million songs per day to 1.5 terabytes of content. Uh, and he did all this even though he has not launched an app in two and a half years. However, he did launch a new website that people can go check out. And everybody should go check that out. Smool.com, I would imagine. Smool. That's S-M-U-L-E, I would think, dot com. Smooly. So it's pretty crazy, man. You know, he says that it's not all bad. 
The numbers are impressive. It does seem like Smooth is on its way to achieving the vision of building a social network around music. And it helps performers, too. <coughs> Which, yeah. hopefully, uh, you know, maybe uh, Facebook will see this guy does something really good. Hopefully something really good will come out of this and we can all go to uh, Smooth's Smool, fucking... Uh, Version of, Smooth's version of Facebook hey, or whatever. You want smooth. The business model lesser, but. The business model of music is engagement, and that's nothing to be afraid of, says Sam Smith. Right, but how is he expecting the like what is he considering the engagement? Is it just listening? Is it going to show? I mean, it's obviously everything, but how is he gonna achieve that? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, I hear what he's saying, but I'm not sure how he's going to achieve what he wants. Well, he says uh, updating existing apps and going deeper in the networks. Make sure that they launch in 2015 sometime. They're going to ship more of this app. And uh, apparently, once you get this, then it's kind of like having all these other things. And I, and I don't know what makes them apart. Dude. They haven't launched it yet. So something to keep an eye out. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, Smool's not a, a Joe company. I mean, they've been around for years, you know. Yeah, you just, when someone's going to claim that it's going to be the next big thing, it, it, I mean, granted, Facebook's a love-hate relationship, <clears throat> but... They, they develop music-making apps, so that's what they do. Connecting the world through music. Listen to music made by millions of people around the globe. Smool.com. Joe, you should definitely check this out for uh, for Stagger, dude. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, we have an app right now, but it's like a reverb app. No, I know, but like as far as joining yeah, the community and checking out, you know, it's my Yeah, absolutely. Way. You know me, man. I'm a whore. I'm always into promoting us, so I will be checking that out tomorrow. Apparently, with Smool apps, anyone can make music. Find the right app for you. They've got Sing Karaoke. they got Magic Piano. they got Guitar. they got Auto Rap and more. But is it for making music or for? It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of neat actually. It's it's kind of like a community of not only signed artists and signed artist music, but like really a lot of independent stuff too. It's it's pretty interesting. People should so you can just go on there and create your own music. Yeah, sounds like a good time. It's not like it could be an interest. Like it's an app like that you can get for your phone. I'm uh, I'm I'm into that. Yeah, I mean, you might want to just to pick it up and just fucking fuck around, you know, maybe make up stupid ditties, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like GarageBand, in it's, a sense. Yeah, exactly. But on the go. Right. And, uh, I like to go. woo I bet you do. Oh, baby, I do. Oh, baby, I like the way. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, go. So there you go. Those are the stories I wanted to do uh, this evening as mail soup. Mail soup. Mail soup. I mean, I do like where he's, what he's thinking about, and what he's headed towards. Right. I'd like to take him, have him. <coughs> excuse me. Um, think about about it on a broader scale instead of just having like fun apps. Right. The guy obviously knows music, so take your wealth of knowledge and expand on it. I want something better than Facebook. Oh, God, yes. You know, and, and, and like I said, it's a love-hate relationship. It's a necessary evil. They do create a wonderful medium for promotion. Um, on your band page, not so much anymore. Yeah, they but, really stripped that down, man. I don't get it. Well, it's because they don't have... They want you to have an ad. And that's how they want you to generate money for the company. And it wasn't until he went public that this was a problem. But that's going to be his constant, you know, guaranteed money. If you want to... And it's funny, you watch bands jump up in numbers, like, within, like, two weeks. And you're like, yeah, you know what they're doing. And now... It, oh. Picking up a call here from uh, Josh Ramore. Are you ready, Joe? Oh, I am beyond ready, sir. Folks, we're going to have a good time tonight with uh, Josh. Fear the masses. Who? 
Caller, you're on the air with the Fish and Fucking Ear Radio. What's up? Hello? Hello? Can you hear anything? Can you hear anything? Hello? Uh, hmm. There you go. I can hear something. Hello? Yep. Who this? This is Josh. Who this is? <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> Hi, Josh. So, bro, um, I'm really glad that you called, bro. It's, a, of course, the Fish Life and Radio Indy 180 tonight. Um, yes, sir. A couple weeks back, dude, you hit me up and wanted to see about getting on the show. And, I, you know, it's totally cool. And I absolutely love having you guys on. And before we get started, I really wanted to say the acoustic set that you guys did uh, that Friday, a couple Fridays ago, dude, was, was top notch. Awesome. I fucking, it's, it's killer, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Fucking, it's a lot of fun to do it every year, you know, and try to make some money for some kids to, you know, get some music education in our lives. Oh, yeah, man. That's why we did FM Fest last year, man. I totally understand. I'm all about it. But uh, uh, yeah. I, th- I thought it was really dope. But anyway, dude, I've been busting your boss kind of on the air a little bit because, like, you hit me up. You were like, hey, yo, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my DMX tip. I want to. I want to get on the air. So I was like, "Hmm, hey, yo, bitch, <laughs> really? Okay." So, um, so yeah. So we've been talking about it a little bit on the air the last couple of weeks, and and Joe and I. Well, we wanted to let you listen to this little thing here, and th- and then we'll talk. So here, listen to this real quick. <laughs> check this. Out. Check this out. Next Tuesday, March 10th, Joshua Moore, Fear the Masses. If you guys missed last week, Joe and I have made a decision on this. <laughs> and I'm standing by this, Joe. All right. Next week, we have Josh from Fear the Masses. And his introduction to me, hey, yo, bitch, I want to get on the show. And so I think in retribution, we're going to do a anything but Fear the Masses show. Yes. I, I think it's the best thing ever. We're going to talk to Josh about anything but Fear the Masses. Just completely ignore he's in a band. <laughs> We are not going to talk about Fear the Masses at all. Not once. Not once. March 10th, 2015. Joshua Moore of Anything But Fear the Masses on Indie <laughs> Oh, I'm not ready for this yet. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's what we're going to do. All right, whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> Game on! I figured you. Uh, I figured you'd be a game to play with us a little bit. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I was on my. I was in my BMX mode. I've been with my BMX all fucking morning. So I totally didn't take I, disres- yeah, I, was- I totally didn't take disrespect, dude. I, I just love you know. <laughs> I, in fact, I, I appreciate because that's total proper conduct for OF and R. Like I'm all about right. that because that's because <laughs> some dude does that shit to me all the time. You know, what I mean, he'll text me like, oh, yeah. "You dirty skank," you know, "Give me a call" or something. You know, something <laughs> crazy. So I'm all about it, but uh, yeah, tonight we're gonna we're gonna fuck around and we're gonna ask you some fucked up shit, and uh, like always, bro. What else is new? What else do you <laughs> ask me? You don't ask me normal shit ever. <laughs> uh, but Joe and I have been last, talking. It was last year the vagina sweater. Yes, yeah, so that was the v- v- vaginate sweater. I was talking about that earlier. <laughs> I would so wear one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there are little period stains on it. Mean, meanwhile, Josh is all like, you know, like. Like, why? <laughs> Why would you do this? No. Like, I didn't... Like, why? <laughs> well, the better question is, would you eat vaginal yogurt? Oh. No, he already asked me about that, and I'm happy that he asked me about it at the acoustic show, because, oh my... Like, yo, know, I was gagging. It was <laughs> it was rough. I really, like... Yeah. I, I was about to throw up, like, shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's a hell of a yeast infection going on right there when you can yeah. create yogurt. That's, that's some scary shit. <laughs> like, that's some scary fucking shit. I don't shit. know what's scary, the fact that she's making it or the fact she thought about it. The, I mean, uh, the fact that she's making it to the point where somebody is eating it. Because she's not just making it for herself. There's no fucking way. Like, it, why go through I'm that trouble? Somebody's actually it. buying that shit and eating it. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how chunky that shit must be? That puts Greek oh, yogurt to shame. <laughs> it's just bad, bad. Oh, the yeah. smell. No, I just, I'm no, I just, I'm no, I just. 
I'm nauseous. It's making me sick <laughs> over here. I think I'm gonna throw up over here. Someone get a bucket. I just, I can't. There's just fucked up people in this world, and every week I find more of them. Yes, every week we find more and more of them in our news stories. Um, so, uh, so since you're on the phone, you know, we are going to ask you some questions. I mean, you know, you are a guest. Yeah. Oh, of course. Kind of, you know, got to ask some things. So, uh, right off the bat, I mean, you know, how did you get the name Joshua? My mom's white. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real easy question. Well, all righty then. <laughs> My mom's white. <laughs> well, shit. Uh. Yeah. Well, uh, so, uh, what was your first pet? Ah, uh, shit. Um, shit, you had shit as a pet, dude. Damn, you. Were, shit, yeah. Pet, damn. Hell yeah. Um, Who didn't have a pet? Shit. When right? I was a when I was a baby, we had a a, a husky mix, a dog. And then we got rid of it when my mom and dad got divorced. So I was like two. That was my first first pet. Wow. See that? Not See, bad. We're learning. Good memory there. <laughs> yeah, it uh, is. Well, I have a problem remembering yesterday. Yeah, no, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I also drink a lot. <laughs> but yeah, you do. Yeah, Joe. You, uh, Josh, you know Joe from from Stagger, right? Yeah. Okay, there go, yeah. Uh, so uh, next question: What what was your kindergarten teacher's name? Miss Corn. Wow, you remember that, sh- dude? I don't fucking yeah. remember that shit. Holy <laughs> fuck! Well, I don't remember it. God, did you like study, Joe? Did you give him the fucking test? Oh man, I, I didn't say nothing. I, I'm I'm completely blown away. I'm speechless here. What? I mean, where do we go next? Do you I remember know, your I first pair of sneakers? Of growing up, so I don't know how I still have my memory at all. <laughs> mm. So, uh, as, as far as uh, things you do during the day, I mean, day job. What what are you what are you currently doing? During the day, I uh, I go to the gym and play video games. Oh, excellent! That's about it. <laughs> I don't have a job right now, so that's that's my daily. You know? So you're stroking the muffin. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know. Well, it's, it's got to be done. I mean, look, man, you know. That, yeah, yeah, when, when, you when gotta, my girl's not around, I mean, what else am I supposed to do? Well, you got to get it done, That's man. a job in itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You bust out the blow paste and you go to town. I got two di- I got two different motions right here, just in case. Well, so you, just, nice. you should just get some... Variety is the spice of life. You should just get some blow paste. You'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm still I'm still rapping the blow paste hard, dude. Cheekychacha.com, go check them out. Blow paste, get yourself some. Hell yeah. Trade your toothbrush for a dick. There you go. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> totally, totally real. I don't know what you're talking about. It just blows me away that someone just sat there and said, hmm. Again, it goes back to the whole what are people thinking? Some are better than others. This one is apparently a better thought and invention than, you know, vag yogurt. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, we're gonna get into, not, we're gonna get into that stuff a little later. Yeah, oh, vag yeah. yogurt and nastiness, but we're not we're not there yet. I mean, we, no. we we should talk about we should talk about the this new band, dude, Male Soup. Yeah, Male Soup. That's a band. Yeah, man, sure. they're go- they're going on tour with uh, Third Bear, Unlucky Scissors, Shave Young Adults, and Ivory Plus One. Male soup, huh? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting name. They're pretty heavy. Yeah, they're pretty fucking. Hot. Uh, do you, I think you'd have to be pretty heavy with the name like Male Soup, wouldn't you? I mean, when do you think they might have like started the band? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I figured we'd talk to you about it because, you know, anything but, right? Hey, hell yeah. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anything but. Fuck, man. We're totally going. Hey, bitches. <laughs> totally going to hell quickly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. So, dude, any, like, independent bands that you got a hard on for right now that are really, like, rocking your socks to you? Because there are, there are a ton. And I just found another one uh, by the name of Edison. I want to play that in a little bit. But uh, 
Man, I'm, I'm constantly finding new music here in Connecticut. Josh, any anything that you're coming across that you're really digging? We just we just played that uh, Metal Fortress thing this weekend, and this band, uh, the band uh, End Time Illusion, we, I've only seen them one other time, but they played again, and they're, they're insane. Disgusting. They're nasty as yeah. fuck. Dis- <laughs> d- disgusting, like, totally. I, I agree. Absolutely. Hitting it in your way, like, instantly. <laughs> Like I've only seen them one other time, so it was, it was like still like it was fresh, like you know what I mean. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. those dudes are dope. Love yeah. discovering new bands. Oh my god, dude! I do. I I, I listened to uh, Pearlman, DJ Pearlman from Revel Nine. He's got a show on on Thursdays uh, at noon. Uh, the new show, yeah. On New Ridge Radio, you know, and and I've been listening to it, and he played this fucking band called Edison. And the fucking song, I just got stuck in my head, and I'm like, motherfucker, who, who, you know, who is this? And then I had to ask him, I'm like, who the fuck is this? And he told me, and, and of course, the band is right here in Connecticut. They're in fucking Norwalk. Right. So it's like, it's pretty cool, you know, we're, we're trying to see if we can set up something in April to uh, do some kind of like, uh, maybe we- webcast or something from, the- cool. from there, from Norwalk, you know, which I think would be awesome, cool. yeah. which I think would be pretty goddamn awesome, so see what we can do but yeah dude i love finding new music my god it's it's, it's the best part of yeah the best part of doing this literally it's like awesome. anytime we don't have shows like i'm out at as many shows as i can get to like just because there's so much good fucking independent music in the state right now like there's no point at being at home like what are you gonna do listen to a cd or something go out and see a show it's cheap as hell yeah. like in plenty of venues yeah, plenty of kick-ass oh. venues, too. Yeah, yeah you guys like a... All of a sudden, it just... I don't... Maybe it's just I'm realizing it more and more, but it just seems like all of a sudden there is just a shitload of bands coming out of Connecticut. Well, dude, it's been a, it's been like this for a while, I'm telling you. Like, I've been... You know, obviously, it's in the last eight years, I mean, that I've seen, dude, there's, there's so many bands, and some not made it. I mean, you know, bands like Blastoma, dude, I love those guys, but, you know, they just didn't make it. Um, right. You know, but then you have these new, fresh, up and coming bands. You got, you know, the the continuums, that's, and they've been around forever too. And I mean, you can't even call them up and comers. I mean, shit, they've been around forever. Uh, comers. You know, Eyes of Dead. They've been out around a decade. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's just crazy, but there are so many newer bands. I mean, God, we've been talking. Yeah, it just seems. We've been talking to bands left and right, like week after week. We find, you know, Samsara and and. And you know all these different bands and doing rock and metal and it's 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 fucking awesome. It's encouraging. Yeah, oh, it's it's, it's, it's just weird. It's like over the last four years, I've just noticed that you guys have been like there's just like a shitload of bands in CT all of a sudden, yeah, which is cool. It's 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 great because like like I said, you can always go to a show and you're always gonna hear something that you like, no matter what show you're at fucking dope as hell to be able to like just go out spend five bucks for to see like five six bands like what's better than that nothing nothing at all that's that's where it's at right there i mean i don't know i wish we had some more of that here you know we don't have you know it's weird once the summer hits we really start rolling but winter time you'd think there'd be more but there isn't right shame and shame Damn so josh shame. what kind of sneakers you like to wear what's going on <laughs> what kind of sneakers do you like to wear oh shit you been talking to my girl or something i'm a sneaker head are you really <laughs> oh joe yeah, you totally I was, stumbled onto something here i did not head. know this how many sneakers do you have? How many pairs of sneakers do you have? I, right now, I'm at my, like, lowest. Um, I have, let's see. I probably have about 13 pairs of just sneakers, about five pairs of boots, and then, like, another three pairs of, like, loafers and, like, more dressy-type shoes. Did you say loafers? But this is, yeah, this is, like, my low point, though. I got rid of, like, five pairs of Tims this past year. When I moved and stuff, I got rid of, like, a bunch of my shoes. So 
this is like the lowest I've ever been, and I'm around like that 20 to 25 mark. Wow. And you've have you worn every single pair of those shoes at least once? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Oh wow. Seems yeah. like it just seems like an awful lot of shoes. It is. <laughs> it is, and like I said, it used to be worse, especially like when I first. Uh, let's see, yeah, when I first turned like 21, I think I had over, uh, just sneakers, sneakers and boots, I had over 50 pairs of shoes when I was 21. Hmm. Interesting. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta coordinate, you gotta match outfits. <laughs> so, so <laughs> would you say you take longer to get coordinated than your girl? Oh no! Oh, okay. But her her thing is, uh, I feel like she just gets distracted. Oh. Like it's not so much that she like takes forever to get ready. She's like, she'll just be like getting ready, and then she'll notice like the bathroom is dirty. She'll still want to clean the bathroom before she, you know, is ready to go. That type of thing. Right. And now and now I'm in like, I'm about to be thirty in a week. Like I'm literally in my like, like just like. As long as I'm comfortable, I'm fine mode. So, like, now it's like, if you see me at a show, there's a good, damn good chance I'm wearing sweatpants and, like, a hoodie. But <laughs> I, right. I don't, I kind of just gave up on trying to impress people. <laughs> Welcome. So now, um, so now, why, why is Grape Nut Cereal called that when it contain the, contains neither grapes nor nuts? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, then. I, I I don't know. I don't have a damn clue. <laughs> Seems like false advertising. I, 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 I don't think could, so. I wonder if we could. It's it. definitely false advertising. What? I wonder if we could sue them. You think we could get away with that? I don't think so. <laughs> what if uh, what People if what if, for less. what if you made it a bulldog and a shih tzu? Would it be called a bullshit? That, it better be. Right, I would I'd think feel so. Feel ripped right? off if it wasn't. So yeah, this is my bullshit. His name is Stains. <laughs> And then you let him out in public, and you're like, "Come stains, come stains." <laughs> we'll feel ripped off if that is not the case, sir. Yeah, that's that's pretty much bullshit right there. <laughs> bullshit. So, so here's a good one. Here's a good one for you, man, to think about. Why does mineral water have uh, trickled through mountains for centuries, right? How, why does it have a go out of date uh, thing on the bottle? Because we live in a fucking dumbass country. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. There's no other answer. That's a positive answer. I agree. Ding. <laughs> when the water fuck? has to expire, otherwise they you know, you're not allowed to sell it. Right. So uh, now check this one out. Were you ever a fan of uh, Gilligan's Island? Did you ever watch that as a show growing up at all? Not really. Well, like uh, what, maybe twice. If the professor. I know, like, the premise. If the if the professor on Gilligan's Island can make a radio out of a coconut, why couldn't he fix the fucking hole in the boat? <laughs> right? I mean, uh, you know, seriously. Oh, that's that. Yep, I don't know. <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> these are these are pretty interesting questions. Well, I mean, you know, I figured. These are what the people really want to hear, you know. That's why they tune in. So, oh hell yeah! So vehemently, no, I'm, I'm, to, to I'm, I'm, I just don't know where you find stuff like this. This is good stuff. <laughs> Josh, why do they call it taking a dump when it should be leaving a dump? I'm, I'm totally losing it, guys. Who knows? Joe, Joe, take it with him? Joe, do you leave a dump? What's that? I, I, I'm, I have like total losing you guys completely. Uh, do you do you take a dump or leave a dump? What? I think, I think we've <laughs> lost Joe. No, I have like a reception problem. Well, put your fucking get your hand off your dick. First of all, <laughs> you sound like a fucking robot. I am a robot. I'm a knob bot. <laughs> That's exactly. It's like <laughs> echoing so much on itself. It's he it makes you sound like a robot. Josh, why do they have, uh, why do they sterilize the needles for lethal injections? Uh, please. Fuck sterilizing that shit. They're gonna die anyway. Well, I'm just curious. Why do they do that? I mean, cruel and unusual punishment? Is that why? I mean, I guess they have I to... I would assume so. They have to sterilize yeah, they, the needle I for... 
I would have to. Uh, I would have to guess. Yeah, it's some sort of like dumb ethical reason for a guy you're killing. Right. <laughs> if uh, if electricity comes from electrons, right? Does morality come from morons? Morality comes from morons. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean no, nothing. I think I don't think this is going very well, Joe. Yeah, I, I think we should abort. Part of the conversation here. I, I think we should abort. Abort. Oh, now abort. I can. <laughs> now he's back. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Now, now that I've totally and utterly gone nowhere fast with, <laughs> with, with our whole thing, huh? With any of this. Well, don't More, you uh, suck that at That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we can talk about veggie burgers or something. Right. Well, I mean, look, I, I still got some questions. We, we, can play, we can play some Would You Rather. Oh, I think we should. So, you see, Josh, you know, because we're going to do anything but, you know, Fear the Masses tonight, and, you know, we figured we'd do some crazy stupid questions, and then I'd give you some choices, and you got to choose one or the other. You can't, you can't pussy out. You can't say either or none. You got you to pick one or the other. All right? Okay. Got the, got, yeah, the rule, got the rules of the game. It was pretty fucking, uh, pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to do. All right, here, let me get the some music going here in the background. <laughs> it's time to play some You Must Choose. All right, I'm going to pour another glass of bourbon, then, if this is where we're going with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Josh, uh, Josh, are there others on the phone with you? What is that noise? All I hear is static. It, was there? Is there? Uh, is there other people there with you? Nah, just my my girls here. Yeah. Uh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 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 hey. What's up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> No, like I didn't like why. So I got some more of those types of questions for you, Josh. I, I bet you do. <laughs> All right, bro. Here we go. Would you rather drink a cup of your mom's period blood or a cup of dad's sperm? You must choose. Oh, that's easy. Dad's sperm because you have to fight him first, and if you see him, tell him he probably owes me some money. See. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Right on. All right. Have your uh, watch your parents have sex a thousand times, or or join in just once. Um, I'm assuming watch a thousand times because I can always just take my contacts out and it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it's just a blur. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> Speaking hey, of taking your contacts, at least that I didn't. I couldn't cheat. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of taking your context out, would you rather watch an erotic movie with your parents or uh, of your parents? Obviously watch it with them, right? <laughs> it's a family yeah. get-together. Nothing says exactly. loving like watching some porn together. Uh, this is where it gets bad, bro. Uh, God, I don't even want to ask you this, man. This is fucking horrible. But I have it prepped, so I got to ask. I mean, it's only right. Would you rather shove, right. a, shove a piece of glass in your dick hole? Oh, God. Or shove a string of nails in your ass and then rip them out? Fuck, oh. neither one of these sounds fucking appealing to me. Joe, you down for yeah, that? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't even know where to go with that one. You must... Yeah, that's you, a, that's, you, that's, why? You must choose. <laughs> See? Just so, why, man? Why? You must choose. You must choose one or the other. Glass I guess the glass, because at least it'd be smaller, and there's, like, no, like, ripping of it out. Dude, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, oh, shit, dude. Ah, oh. dude, I'm getting... It's just... So, it's so not even right, dude. Like... Oh, uh, you can repair your ass. Ah, oh, fuck. Dude, I'm I don't just know. Getting, either way, yeah. either way, it's never going to be the same. Just thinking so. about it, dude, sends shivers up my fucking <laughs> spine, bro. That's no bullshit. No bullshit. <laughs> either, like I said, either way, you're not gonna be the same. So fuck it. Uh, <laughs> you man you that one. Fucked either way. <laughs> All right, bro. Every hair plucked from your body, or every nail ripped from your uh, hands and feet. 
uh, hair. All the hair from your body. Yeah. Every hair plucked. Hair, hair no question. Ow. Damn. Hair, no question. I've seen what it takes to get nails off that are supposed to be coming off. Because I worked in the ER for five years. I don't want to know what it feels like to have them ripped off when they're not dead. Oh. So you've seen some pretty fucked up shit then. Yeah. <laughs> so none of this affects you at all. You're like, <laughs> oh, well, I'm drinking. I still probably grab some cheese it's in a minute and <laughs> eat those too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, before you eat, would you rather eat cat shit or uh, chew off your grandma's hairy mole? Um, probably cat shit. I think that would be. I better. like that. Yeah. Like whatever. Whoa. People eat shit all the time. All right, would you uh, <laughs> would you rather suck a bum's dick or lick a bum's ass? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's another one of those ones where I guess it really doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <You're telling> but <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, lose situation. None of this is like ever gonna, you know, yeah. like, where, where's this application gonna come from? See, see, here's the, here's the problem. You say none of it's gonna happen. Well, who the fuck knows, right? Right, right. So, well, now you'll know. Like, when you're in that situation, you'll know, oh, shit, that's right. I was on Indy 180, and I said I'd suck a bum's dick. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I, I guess I'd go with the ass. Cause, yeah, I guess. Because sucking a dick is not usually, like, like a, like a turn. Like, you got to finish it, right? You can't just, like, throw it in their mouth and then just leave it there. No, I, I don't think that's right. I, I don't one I don't even want to think about it going that far. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Like two, if a girl ever started sucking your dick just, and then just stopped for no reason, wouldn't that be kinda of fucked up? Yeah, that's pretty fucked up, man. Or you so, could just have a, a shit crusted up asshole. Yeah, but one lick is one lick. Yeah, but you know what you can get with that one lick? Uh yeah. That's why you fucking rinse your mouth with fucking Ooh. rubbing alcohol. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, either way, it's a bad situation. Now, yeah, no. I, like I said, I'm forced to answer one way or the other. I might as well try to pick the, the so better one. You want to suck one. some button cock. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and last question. <clears throat> Would you rather eat the vag yogurt or eat dick cheese? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Yo <laughs> <laughs> Yo you said some funny ass shit But that's probably the funniest That's probably the best one yeah Oh man Fuck I don't I, 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 like, like I'm dead serious about the pussy out on the last question Cause this is the most fucking shit <laughs> You must choose Oh my god, dude! Ugh. Dude, you know, for me, I'm going with the veg. I'm going with the veg yogurt because I guess you have to. Like, I think you have to. Yeah, I it, think at this. It, yeah. It's just, oh, oh man. <laughs> 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 like I do. I think you have to, but uh, yeah, especially the big cheese thing. You know, that threw me for a loop. That's kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't get down. No, it has uh, nothing. Has nothing to do with the nuts. Just the dick itself. Just the shower. <laughs> it's cheesy. So it's cheesy. It's yeah, cheesy. like right under the rim cheese. Oh god. Like dude. some from under <laughs> cheese. Yeah, but it, it's from under the rim, not your balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it could be uh, from the balls too. I mean, I guess if you want to throw in a little balls in there, yeah. I mean, if you're really getting into the male soup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> A little ball cheese. And, and you got to throw in a little touch of taint, too. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Please my name in vain. And there you go. Of course, a uh, little game for you to play. But, uh, dude, uh, in all seriousness, uh, we can't keep up the charade, Joe. I like fucking Fear, Nut, uh, uh, Fear the Masses too fucking much. To yeah. not, well, to I'm, I'm, we got a half an hour of it in, so I think we did pretty good. Dude, <laughs> I'm surprised I only like gagged once in this whole half hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we, we're not know, done like, yet. Yeah, that last one definitely got me. But oh yeah, we're not we're uh, not finished yet. Yeah, now we're gonna talk. Now we're actually are gonna talk about, of course, your band, dude, because uh, 
you guys rock and and uh i'm sure you got some <laughs> some stories to tell us still uh of course i wonder uh, if doug i wonder if doug still is and uh, his life's pairing because I, I think <laughs> <laughs> you know off and R is not always family friendly we do have a parental advisory <laughs> on our website Doug did say, however, via chat, uh, that you do own two pair of heels. And Joe, I think we need to verify this. Josh, do you own two pair of heels? I do not. Well, Doug, um, I don't know where you would get heels in a size thirteen. But are you um, lying? <laughs> are you lying? <laughs> what the fuck? It's so fucked up. Fuck it. Are you yeah, catching like no, Buffalo no Bill? Uh, Fucking Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you can get size 13 heels anywhere. <laughs> you can get size 13 heels, huh? Well, Joe, Joe wouldn't know. Joe doesn't wear no size. Joe, Joe you don't wear no Joe size 13. Wear. No, I wear a 12. <laughs> Man, you wear a 12, kids. <laughs> you. <laughs> hide your burrito. You want to fuck my burrito, man? That's racist. <laughs> no. Eating your burrito would be racist. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can eat my burrito anytime, Joe. <laughs> oh, I like your burrito. <laughs> this has gone downhill real fucking fast. Right? Uh, it's gotten totally out of control, and everyone just needs to, to chill for two seconds, okay? Because, <laughs> god damn it, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> What about Holy vag yogurt shit. on her period? What happens then? Ah, oh, dude, vag yogurt on her period. That's fuck up. Oh. Is that like like cherry flavored? Ah, oh, dude. Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's, it's iron like flavored. Tinny. Yeah. It'd be all like tin. Yeah. Tinny and, like, you, sir, can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking it's going to be like strawberry and cherry colored. Yeah, it's going to be colored, but it's not going to. It's going to taste colored. like irony. Yeah. yeah. It's going to taste like that. It's going to go. Either way, it's going to be great. So I don't know what the fuck the point is. <coughs> it's kind of nasty. I oh, like man. shaved pushy. Well, who doesn't? So, no, seriously, Josh, do you guys have any dates coming up that people can check out the band? Because uh, I think we've had enough of this ridiculousness. <laughs> we've had our, we've yeah, had our we fun. Had, um, we've had our fun. Let's and, do uh, something serious. Me and Brian's uh, birthday show is the 27th of this month. That's right. So that's the that's the main one. Um, we're booking. We had a couple of dates in April, but one of them fell through. So we're booking. I'm um, reopening April to book a couple more shows, maybe. And then May we're taking the whole month off, um, because Douglas and his wife are having a child. Correct. So nothing in May, and then June we have uh, June sixth. With uh, in the red, uh, demons past and crossing group with town. I believe just was added as well. Nice. And then we're doing um, June thirteenth. We're doing the bacon fest with uh, Eric Ayoka and whatever that entails. Yeah, and the flyer is almost done. And dude, he's bringing in like a thousand pounds of bacon or some shit. That's what I heard. Yeah, I'm pretty goddamn pumped. J Joe, I don't care, <laughs> I, dude. You got to figure out a way to get up here. That. That that day, Joe. What day? The the twenty seventh. June. June thirteenth. No, June June thirteenth. Oh. Dude, he actually Eric actually asked us to play that show, and I can't. Thousand uh, pounds of bacon. Wah, dude, I'm wah, so, wah. so upset because, well, it, it's my wife's birthday and my wedding anniversary. Oh uh, well, yeah, then you totally can't. Oh, uh, then uh, you're done. And yeah. Every year. <laughs> For like the last, I don't know, five years, I've played on my anniversary. Uh, and most of the yeah, time it's been like out of state, so I haven't even been like anywhere around. So I promised her this year, because it's our 15 year wedding anniversary, that I would, uh, you know, <laughs> I would <laughs> stay home this year because, you know, we're not around the next two months at all. Right. So. Right. I'm trying to be like a good guy about it and, you know, not be a total douchebag. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm mad. Well, I like bacon. 
All right, so hang on, hang on the line here a second, uh, Josh. We're gonna play a track. I'm gonna do censor this off the album, of course. Everybody should get this fucking record. It was in my CD player forever. We'll talk more about it. We'll talk more about Fear the Masses right here on O F N R's Indie 180. Joe Stagger, Josh, of course, of Fear the Masses. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet to me. Fucking back. <laughs> Yeah. 
I just wanted to make an official statement uh, and apologize for our buffoonery and ridiculousness. And quite frankly, sir, no, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. That was some fear of the fucking masses with censor this, of course, <laughs> kick ass and debauchery. I fucking love it, man. Uh, yeah, I was very confused why you would want to apologize for that. <laughs> Me? I, I thought you might have been like, you know, taking the Zoloft or something for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, no Zola for me. No, I eat the chimichanga. I'm just good. We should do, maybe. Maybe we should do a bad lib in a little bit. Oh, dude. Papa. So, you guys working on any new material, maybe? Or yeah, we got uh, two new songs in the works. Um, if anybody came down to the that Sunday show we did, I think it was the 22nd of February. We kind of gave a quick preview of one of them. Um, we got a couple of, uh, we got two songs almost completely done right now. Um, just with the addition of Brian, we had to get him up to speed. Um, get all the old stuff learned from him. And then now we're able to start writing again. And, uh, that process of looking to hopefully record this fall again. So we got to get some, a few more songs written. So how does that happen? I mean, what's the process? I don't. I know we've talked about this before, but yeah, I don't know how other bands work. We're just like we're that we kind of all bring our own little stuff to the table. One of the new songs is actually based off of a riff Brian had written um, a while ago and didn't know what to do with. So we kind of just played around with it and we came up with something very cool. So. Like, we kind of just take something, like uh, the track uh, Behind Your Walls that's on that, the Rise album. So I'm going to censor this. That one was Mike just dicking around fucking on his hi-hat stand. Like, in between songs at practice, and we liked what he was doing, so we ended up just, like, basing a whole song off of that. So we just kind of find something we like, and we just play it. Cool. That's kind of how we are. That's cool. Yeah, man. I, yeah, we we don't try to force it. Like we have no like set genres. Anybody who's listened to our music can tell. We just kind of like to play. So like we're like hip hop, metal, funk, reggae, ska. <laughs> like we don't have a set formula when we go into writing. So it's just about like whatever we're listening to or whatever like influences we have protector is one of those songs like just sitting there like listening like mike was listening to Wyclef all week he's like let's write some reggae and we're like all right cool let's write some fucking reggae that's what happened (laughs) yeah man that's awesome i i fucking think it's awesome man and so now let's talk about and I, I mean, I know obviously Doug and, and the guys, you know, the musicians and yourself, like, how do you take the tracks that you have? These are, you know, you guys are pretty hard band. I mean, and strip them down. How, how, what's the process there? Um, I mean, I th- it was so it, cool, man. God damn it. It was just so cool to, to see those songs like in a just <laughs> totally different light. You know what I mean? Because. Right, it, it's bare, dude. Honestly, it's totally bare. But once again, which is which is crazy. This is this was actually Mike's idea. Um, yeah, like two years ago, Mike came to us with that idea of let's we should do an acoustic set because we did one um, song on um, it was a Boston independent Boston station. We wanted, they asked us to come up and play acoustic. So we came up and we did um, Veiled, which is one of the songs we did uh, this year at the acoustic show. Um, we did one of the, we did that, and like people really liked it, and like wanted us to do more. And Mike was like, "Let's do an acoustic show," um, mainly because Mike Mike isn't really that into metal. Like Mike likes metal, but he's not like gonna like sit there and listen to it all the time. So. Mike is more, like, into whatever's, like, in his head at that moment. So he he had a really cool idea because of the fact that people don't really like 
so like some people don't like metal purely because they can't get past like maybe the screaming aspect or like just like the down tuning and like how like full of a sound it is so he had the idea if we strip it down it might you know create more of like it might create a cool fan base and like might allow people who aren't into metal to get more into metal and our process really just is is we kind of just take the songs um if we feel as though they need to be kind of rewritten we'll do that uh doug is really good about stuff like that doug takes and rewrites his guitar tracks pretty quick and um and then we just go from there mike mike just kind of keeps some rhythm keeps some time uh on the djembe or the shakers or whatever the hell he wants to use at that time and me i grew up singing so singing is honestly like i started in gospel when i was three so singing is honestly a lot easier for me than screaming all that other stuff is i just learned how to scream like seven years ago so that's still relatively new to me compared to the 27 years i've been singing for so like it's just kind of like once we once we get the riff, we just I just figure out the notes and we just go with it. Off you go, yeah, absolutely, man, and it's fucking it's dope as fuck, truly. And I'm not just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was awesome, and the, like all the bands killed it this year. Oh my it was, god, man, it was yeah. really great, dude. Seeing seeing fucking our own destruction because they're, they're a pretty heavy band, you know, like, right? And see them like break it down and and do it acoustic like whoa like and it's just it was still crushing but like it was acoustically crushing it was crazy right exactly you know composing crazy. It i didn't know that good. uh i didn't know what's his is it it's like teeth or something right the drummer plays guitar too apparently yeah apparently he came out for the last song and played guitar but <laughs> i think that's fucking dope as hell <laughs> yeah man it was totally a good time man great show and uh you know, uh, we played the uh, replay last last week. We played the, uh, you know, if anybody missed it, because, of course, Open Arm was there. We broadcast it, and uh, Doug's got all that audio, so I know he's in Florida, yeah. right, bastard. But he could have yeah. could have at least packed some of us in his su- suitcases or something, you know? I don't, right? take a, I don't take I don't a, know if he could have carried it, though. He's kind of a little guy. I mean, you know, I put me in wheels, man. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know, the wheels. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, dude, I'm small. I'll, I'll fit in a little suitcase, man. I'll, I'll even... You can check me. I'm cool. It's fine. Yeah. yeah he'll be fine. Give him a case of Vag yogurt. He'll make it through the flight. Yeah, some Vag yogurt. Exactly. exactly. I love, I love <laughs> yeah, Vag yogurt. It's delicious. So yeah, protein or yeast, you'll be fine, man. Yeah, man. And it, ta- <laughs> and it tastes like pussy, so it's just amazing. Uh, I'm thinking it doesn't taste like pussy. Well, it's... I'm it's, thinking it tastes I, like dirty pussy. I'm going to be... Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Joe's probably right on this one. Because <laughs> to get the yogurt to start festering, you can't be all that clean. <laughs> and she was an ugly bitch, too. So I'm assuming her shit's dirty. Why are they? And they're always ugly. Like, that's. that's because they have nothing else to do. All this weird shit with their fucking, like, genitals and shit are fucking ugly as fuck. Well, when you're ugly yeah. and you got no cock in your life, you start going, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm going to turn my vag juice into yogurt. In Man, I really need some cock in my life. <laughs> so, might as well make yogurt. <laughs> maybe my yogurt. Wow, that dude, maybe but maybe she's trying to go the other way. Right? It don't matter what way she's going. She has just lost every sexual encounter ever cuz she is sitting there <laughs> with a fucking cup collecting her shit. To make yogurt. Oh, well, not God. shit. No, it's not her shit, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's it's from it's it's her, yeah, it's vag yogurt. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, she has a cup hanging from between her legs, catching her drippings. <laughs> Was she a fucking turkey? Man. Is he is he basting puking? herself every day? Dude, you're not puking, are we? We're not making you sick, are we? Because no, 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 that's not cool. No. <laughs> Bad, funny. I'm actually like the TV is like uh, like really low, but. It's funny as shit. That show, uh, Bizarre Foods, is on the same <laughs> time. <laughs> Just as we're talking about this, you can't get away from it. I love that. That dude. shit is bad, buddy. Uh, just like a really crazy. There's gonna come a point when you forget. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> we actually, our drummer Carmine can, he pukes pretty easily. Yeah. And we were 
doing a radio interview one time and we got him to puke on air. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, he it's pretty funny. He Yeah. He, he he's a but I love him. <laughs> but he pukes so easily, it's great. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, shit, sure. nah. This yeah. is what I, I actually had for him to fucking say because John Hollywood brought it to my attention. I know you and your son watch uh watch wrestling. Yes. Yes. Apparently we do. I look like that like a Daryl Young or Darius Young. Okay. I guess he's like some black guy. He's got a mohawk and a beard. So apparently I look like him. But then like he showed me a picture and I do actually look like him. <laughs> like he's what does he say the team was? The primetime players yeah, or something prime like that? Yeah, primetime players, yeah. Him, him, yeah. him and Titus O'Neil, yeah. Yeah, John, John Hollywood goes, you look just like him. I'm like, all right, dude. Like, like come on, man. Like, I expect it from white folks. But then he showed me a picture. I'm like, oh, shit. Man, oh, <laughs> shit, I do look like him. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of wrestling. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like I told Jesse, I've been telling Jesse for the longest time. He looks like the the Bray Wyatt dude. He does, dude. He totally game. looks like Bray I Wyatt, have... dude. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he looks just like his ass. Totally, dude. He, re- I mean, seriously, like he, it, it, dude. They rocked the house too, man. The fucking composing, man. That shit was awesome. Mm. You know, they're really they're really heavy too. Yeah, they're man. another really heavy band that I'm surprised is able to do so well transposing their stuff to acoustic. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck yeah! Yeah, I I actually think one of the new tracks Jesse might be uh, doing some guest vocals on, so awesome. that might be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be definitely cool. And I love seeing that man, and, and I think it's cool now. Let, let's talk. I mean, let's let's talk a little. I, I, we've been goofing around and whatever, and, and kind of talking yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. But like, we've been talking for the last uh, month and a half or so about like music industry and music industry as a business and using your band as a business and stuff like that. Any thoughts on? I mean, do you come? I, and you're turning thirty. Do you come more from the age of buying records, or do you, or do you lean more towards the digital? To me, it depends on how much I like it, to be honest. If I, I usually just because I'm like, because I'm home and like, there's like the closest record store is like 30 minutes away that like has like newer CDs. There's Exile and Branford, but they usually kind of run more of the old school route. They have a lot of, like, Zeppelin and stuff like that. Um, but, so I'll get digital copies, but if I really like a band, like, I'll go out of my way to go and get, um, their actual album, you know, to help, because, I mean, Joe knows, and I'm sure you know, like, paying, like, as a band, it's very rare that you have an artist in your band on top of that, like who does actual illustrations and stuff. So like you pay, usually pay an artist to do some of your artwork or if like you have a great friend who's just nice enough to do it for free. That's awesome too. But like, so you support those people, you support the rest of like, you know, that scene. So I'll go and buy, if I like a band, there's, I will go and buy their their album like any time, and then yeah, I mean, every, almost almost every local band like I try to snag an album from like lately. Without the job thing, it's been a little more rough, but I definitely try to at least like if I can't afford one like or whatever. Usually, you know what's awesome about local musicians is everybody is just trying to share their music. So a lot of bands are like, let's trade like music and stickers and some merch and stuff so like you know like i got i got like cds from bands that have cds from us now and like and like i tell everybody you know i don't care give it to people pirate it i don't care like we're trying to we're nobody important like our goal is for people to hear the music right now like we know we're not making any money off of albums right now so like, I'm down with, like, giving away CDs, if, like, especially to other bands. 
like it always works out for the best for the band. Sure. Any, yeah, I agree. I, I love band trades. Any thoughts on oh, yeah. <clears throat> any thoughts on the idea that twenty fourteen was the first year since uh nineteen seventy six that there was only one platinum record? Any thoughts on that? I think I well the only thought I really have on it is that I hope it shows the like I I hope the record companies see this as like almost like the 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 death of like bullshit mainstream radio. Like I think like that really is it really shows that like like people would rather go and now they can go and buy a track rather than buying like a whole album. So when you just like put an artist out there and have them on every station, people are like get in love with that one song. They're not going to buy the whole album anymore. So, so like these mainstream stations, like where you literally like, I can't even turn on the radio when I'm in the car. I literally will sit in silence if I don't have like a, like a local band to listen to a local CD. Like I will sit in silence before I listen to like main radio because I'm literally listening to the same six songs and no matter what station I turn to, especially in Connecticut where we don't have a rock station anymore, like same six songs over and over again. So I might as well just not listen. Agreed. And those, and those stations, like those record companies that are pumping those stations full of fucking money to play that one song now are eating it because nobody's buying those albums. They're buying the single. Or, or one, it's, uh or, they saturated too much. Yeah, or what we were talking about just a little while ago, Joe, is streaming. You know, streaming audi- right. audio is a really big thing. You know, now people oh, don't have, now people don't have to buy the record; they can just stream it from a source with a, with a subscription, like Netflix. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm okay with I'm okay with streaming because like I think like I'm all for sharing music. I don't think that. I don't know. To me, to me, music's like art. Like, I, I, we, we play because we love it. Like, it would be awesome to be able to do it for a living and support our families. But we're doing it because we love it. Like, we, we get out there on stage and we go crazy because it's fun for us to get up on stage and go crazy. Like, we're not looking that night to fucking make a million dollars. Like, we're looking that night to fucking have a good time and let people enjoy something that we enjoy doing so realistically like if people want to stream our music if they want to get on itunes and buy it if they want to come to a show and buy a physical copy it all it all like all it really means is that they enjoy what we do and that's that's what's important to to this band is like we we want people to enjoy what we're doing and if they do that's awesome yeah, I mean, I can't see how you know. It's sure it's not for everyone. I'm, I mean, there's no music that is these days. There's split. Right. Do you, do you, any thoughts on this one? I I was talking about uh, this a couple weeks ago, maybe last week even. The splitting of hairs. Is there too many fucking subgenres of music these days, or or is it just me? Am I too old? I'm I'm with you on it. Like I I, I think when I think when you. I think the the whole subgenre thing. I think what the problem with that is is then you have. I think it's when bands are trying to make music, and I think it really kind of screws with younger kids. Because I remember when I first started doing like anything hardcore, like uh, like the um, the guitar player was dead set on like this is a way. This was about twelve years ago. Um, the guitar player was dead set on we are a post hardcore band. It has to be post hardcore. Like and and that was like that was like ten, twelve years ago, like as opposed to like now and like post hardcore has even post hardcore has like seventeen other genres underneath that. Like it really inhibits bands from just being creative. Like it inhibits it's young kids old. from being creative, like you you sit there and you you, you want to oh I want to play I want to play like we have to play metalcore we have to we have to play metalcore we have to play this we have to play that like as soon as you get into like pigeonholing yourselves you're no longer creative all your songs are gonna sound the same 
you're going to be the next Nickelback of whatever genre you want to call yourself. You're just going to keep playing the same music over and over again. Everything's going to be the same, and that's where I think, like, something like that really lies. Like, you really... I think... I, I definitely think that putting down subgenre after subgenre, like, you definitely are not allowing people to grow as musicians. You're putting them in a specific spot, and that's why... That's why, like, with this band, like, if you can tell us what genre we are, cool, man. <laughs> Hang on, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're just playing music and having a good time doing it. Like, like fuck a genre, fuck a subgenre. Like, people call us new metal, people call us hip-hop metal, people call us mosh pit hip-hop, people call us all kinds of different things. Like, we're just playing music. I don't have, like, we don't have a name for it. We just play music, you know? We found a home in the Connecticut metal scene because... Connecticut metal scene is probably one of the best scenes that I can say that I've seen in a very long time. Like, so that's what we're with and that's what we're down with. But are we really like this crazy metal band? No, we're not. No. But are we like, are we this crazy hip hop band? No, yeah. we're not. We just play music. And you do a damn fine job of it, I must say. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Makes the girls go cray cray. Did I just say cray cray? Really? You did. I think what? you did. I, I, what? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, really? That's fucking horrible. I mean, I, 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 Josh said it as best as I could have ever said it. I mean, I feel the same way with all these sub genre shits. I mean, how many times have we talked about it? I know, and well, that's why I bring it up because I, you know, I'm just curious. I mean, because maybe it's me, dude, or maybe it's you. I mean, we're older guys. Uh, you know, I just think it's. There used to be a point in time when it was just fucking metal. You listen to metal or you didn't. Right. You either listen to metal or you didn't. If you listen to metal, cool. You know, I mean, yeah, sure, there was fucking death metal, it got a little heavier or real fucking crazy shit, like you know. But, but it was still metal. But yeah, it was still metal. And then it just got really crazy all of a sudden, like. This is common core metal. Like, what the fuck? Well, that means we're pretty screwed because we're like drunk core. Yeah, you're like drunk whores. So. <laughs> you're like drunk whores. Yeah, we're, we are like whores. There's no doubt about like, it. I, the, like, the worst part is, is, like, now, like, you go past, like, you drive past a high school, there's a bunch of kids outside wearing all black smoking cigarettes. Even if they're goth kids, emo kids, screamo kids, like, you don't know how to make fun of the fuckers. Like, how do you make fun of them? Yeah, oh. how to make fun of them. Wow. It's it, it taking a whole <laughs> kind of game away from me because I used to drive by and yell at them all the time when I knew what they that. were. But it kills me, these fucking kids today with the fucking hair going to one side. God and damn kids today with the hair growing down to one side. That's what you sound like. Skinny jeans and their balls are sucked up into their guts and I don't get it. God damn pants are around their ankles. <laughs> Alright, Grandpa. It'll be okay. Yeah, all right. Go back to the home. <laughs> any, any, any thoughts on Kanye West? Oh man, I uh, is he I wish he a, is just he a would buffoon? Shut stupid face. Yeah, is he a buffoon? I think so, right? He is. No, he's a complete piece of crap. But man, is his music good? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I hate. Like, it's the worst part. Like, he is so talented. Just stop talking about it. It to me, it's on that same range as like like any great musician. Like, you can't. Like, if you're good. Nobody needs you to remind them. Yeah, your music will do the talking. <laughs> like, you don't need to talk about it. He's literally, like, the only artist I've ever really heard, like, need to tell people that he is this amazing artist. When everybody kind of had a general consensus of how good he really is, which is really good. But he still needs to say it. That's some crazy shit. <laughs> that is some crazy shit. Yeah. He's an idiot. It's just, yeah, yeah, you know, and and you wonder though, is it 
is that idiocy on purpose? Do you know what I mean? Like it's a way to stay current. It's like Charlie, like like a Charlie Sheen style. Like he played everybody for two years and then sold out like three arenas, right? For punk, like millions of dollars, and then he just got up there and sat there like an asshole. <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't do anything. I don't think Kanye's smart enough to think of that. Because the shit he does is just stupid. Right. I, I don't know. I really don't. I don't know. He's just, it seems like he's just like a narcissist. Like, that's just his thing. But I don't know. Like, he's, his music is so fucking good. Like, just shut up about it. Fish, yo. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the way I think about it is, Something was wrong when he went with a Kardashian. So oh, he was yeah. reaching for something. But dude, they got money. Uh, they got money, yo. I just can't figure out for what. What they did to, to get money. They didn't do anything. Uh, their dad did. OJ? Their dad did. <laughs> um, like, but, I their mean, dad was one of OJ's trial lawyers. Like, their dad's got money. I mean, he's dead. So I guess so that's how like they record or something, too. Yeah, probably. Weird. It now, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. He, I don't know how that makes you famous, but I guess so. Well, because they're you know <laughs> they all have big asses and big titties, which <laughs> normally I don't mind. With that. And big old fucking asses, my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I love those big asses and the that, big titties. That but, ass has got its own area code. But you know they're just skanky. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're all and they're all insane. Like yeah. It's not uh, worth anybody's time. Look what you did to Bruce Jenner. I was just going to say, I was going to ask about that. That was going to be my next thing. Any thoughts on he's that? So, he was normal before them. Now he's a woman. Yeah, I don't know. He's, I don't know. He's, he's another fucking crazy fucking, like, plastic surgeon addict. Like, a bunch of people out in, like, Hollywood and shit. It's just like... I guess it's like, like, can, like be the same with like tattoos maybe because like I know like ever since I got my first tattoo I've been trying to get more but like I don't understand like the difference with plastic surgery I would think it would yeah, be that- kind of the same sort of principle because once you do something let's say you did your cheekbones now it's like oh well my cheekbones are great but now my nose kind of looks really fucked up I don't do my nose now right so. then it's not, well <laughs> you know my my nose looks great my cheekbones look, but my forehead and eyes that's just all fucked up okay? <laughs> well see here's the thing if you don't touch it none nothing else looks fucked up well, right well, exactly well no shit but I mean you know dude I mean. Do I need to pull out the news stories early? Uh, oh, wait, it is 10 o'clock. I mean, dude, we could fucking go through the list of stupidity, man. Come on. But, yeah. But, You're not no. kidding about that. They need family time. <laughs> they just, need to sit down, get some family time, make some vaginal yogurt together, and just stop it. <laughs> just Son of stop a bitch. It. I mean, there's, that part of this country should just be cut off. Because all the idiots are over there anyway. And just, goodbye. Float off into the, you know, the ocean and peace out. Because, come on. Come on. Just come on. Stop it. There is no reason. These people have plastic surgery on top of their plastic surgery because now they need more plastic surgery. So you're saying saying that you want to gather up a bunch of people and and put the people who got plastic surgery on an island? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? We can dig it, Joe. Uh, holy yes. shit. <laughs> we can totally dig it, man. Dude, who shot Cyrus, Joe? I think it was Stagger Boys that did it, man. It was the Stagger yeah, Boys that did it, man. It was. <laughs> But think about I'm it, man. People are getting butt tonight now. Now that you put that on. <laughs> Dude, that movie's awesome. God damn it. That movie's the shit. It's so underrated, <laughs> yo. Unbelievable. So anyway, dude, it's uh, it's about ten ten here. We don't want to keep you much longer, dude. We really appreciate you calling in and hanging out with us for tonight. I mean, oh hell yeah, you're more than welcome to stay. Always a good time. If you want, we're gonna do the news here, and uh, of course, we're gonna play some more Fear of the Masses. Is there a track you'd like me to play? Is there something in particular? 
You want me to play? Yeah, play, play whatever you like, man. Whatever, whatever you like from us is always our favorite track. Well, you might as well just play the CD then. Right? Well, dude, that's no joke, man. That, <laughs> dude, that CD was in my car for like fucking six months, man. I had to like physically force myself to remove it so I could listen to other music. Cause, awesome, man. Thank you. It's much appreciated. It really is. That's not. I'm not bullshitting. Like, I'm not making that up. That's <laughs> for real, man. It's just so, I had to get one of them things. It's so fucking good, man. It really is just front to back. Like, there's no song on there that you're like, meh, skip, you know. It's just a great... Because <laughs> sometimes you get those, you know. Sometimes... Oh, uh, like, yeah. Like, know, we, we cool. definitely... Oh. We definitely have had our fair share of those tracks, even for ourselves, that we were just like... Eh, it was good. We probably could have tried to make it an actual song, but whatever. Yeah. Like next, you know, next one. <laughs> so yeah, we we really worked hard on that album, and uh, you know, it, it ended up really like great for us. So we we need, like the whole thing. I don't think we have. We all have our favorites on it, but I think like. As a whole, I think we all just really enjoy the whole thing and the process that it that it took to make that album was really good. Oh yeah, and of course, March twenty seventh, everybody go check out Fear the Masses at Cook's Cafe for your and Bry's. Is it Brian's birthday as well? Yeah, my birthday is the eighteenth. His is, I believe, the twenty sixth. So, so it just ends up like within those amazing. two weeks. So we had a show and we decided let's let's make that happen. I well, think- don't destroy cooks. I need it. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> you can't make no, no promise. promises, yeah. It'll be a good show. We got uh, My Missing Half, Woods of Art, and The Aberration, Our Own Destruction, and Sever the Drama. Nice. It's all going to be there, too, so it'll be a really good show. Kick ace. Wow. Always a pleasure, my friend, Josh, dude. Seriously, uh, thanks for, for everything and, uh, you know, for calling thanks in. Thanks for letting us have fun with you. Yeah, uh, le- yeah, letting us have some fun with you. And, dude, I'm truly oh, a yeah. fan. And, uh, you know, keep on rocking and keep keep me posted on things going on. And when you guys uh, maybe, oh, yeah, maybe make up that little CD you guys were talking about, because Doug's got all that audio. Yeah, we're going to, um, the guys in the shape, they have their studio, so they're going to, help mix it down and we're gonna we'll hopefully have it all up on hopefully each band can throw it up on their website maybe have a copy or like a few with them at shows and then uh we can do you know have it up at uh the at off and off forever that's right throw it up there for sure and uh we'll have we'll, we'll make sure that the kids get some some more money you know supporting inner city kids keeping them out of trouble and keeping them into music yeah, damn straight, man, because if you're going to support global independent music, you got to start with the kids, man. Hell yeah. And you know this, man. And you know this, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, thanks for having me, man. And uh, as it's always, nice. it's always good hanging out with you guys. Fucking, yeah, Joe, next time you're in the next time you're in the state, the 15th is when you're going to be up no, here? No, 28th. Uh, 28th, the day after 20th. your show. Beautiful. That's perfect. I will make sure that I am there and I give you a copy of uh, our album. Yeah, man. We'll be at Cook's the, on the 28th. Perfect. All day, all night. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. So, it'd be great yeah, to have you come it. out, man. we we'll exchange <laughs> some goodies. Fuck it. I'll just never leave. Yeah, right. Okay, that's good, man. Just sleep over. Tell, t- tell Mark you put up a cot. Yeah, you're probably going to find me out in that hallway somewhere. Right? So. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know why. I just love that hallway. I was hanging out there a lot the last time. <laughs> All right, Josh, man. We'll be in touch for sure. You know that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Be well. All right, Have man. Fun. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right, man. Good luck with your sneakers. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later, brother. Peace. There you go, Josh from uh, Anything But Fear the Masses. Anything But. I can't believe we got a half an hour of that in. It was awesome. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah it was great. Good time. Good sport. You know, like, and, and, you know, we're just goofing around. I mean, you know, nobody's taking it too seriously here. We're having a good time. Yeah. We're doing like that. Really- just like Josh was saying, man, having a good time. Yeah, I, I thought he was going to puke. I really did. I heard some gurgling.
Uh, Doug says, I had to put uh, headphones on due to the colorful nature of our program. And uh, his mother-in-law was not too amused. Well, um, I, am, I, I, do, I do apologize. It is a fish fucking new radio. And, and while uh, mom and, you know, I'm not, the, you know. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is off an hour. We have a parental advisory uh, yes. thing you right You should have read the website beforehand. That's right. Anywho, let's do, a, let's do a music break, and we're going to come back. We'll do the news. And uh, you'll keep it locked right here on off an hour. Fizzle yes, they will. And if you news. don't, I'm going to find you. Oh, uh, shit. I think I'm getting sick, and I blame my you kids. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, my God. I don't care if you're dying, you're going to come on Saturday. We'll be right back. We will. <laughs> yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. God damn it. Fuck Get it. some Tussin. Put some Tussin on it. As I look out on our people, the pain that we feel is at the weak. 100% minus one, but they're the people. We are the strong. Step fast, be your leader. The front is strong, but slow, so I'll poke shells on Adidas. They can't defeat us. No, then who will lead us? I'll be on the matter of traditional power. It's all enough to fit the bill. If food can kill, this real will make you ill. Have you dealt with the sickness and the stir? Just be a real now. The ass is what I'm breathing. Sins like Iraq and 9 11, which is instances. Never mind what our economic condition is. Revolution, not our right, is what our mission is.
What's in the bag, dude? You got like a whole bag of CDs right there, man. If you were to pick out one CD out of that whole bag this week, what would it be? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag?
cancer of the world We are the cancer of the world We are the cancer of the world Pretty awesome to me. Yeah, man. It's gonna be madness. Tonight, of course, we got the maddening process. Drew. Yes, it is. How long has the maddening process been? The banning process? How long you guys been around? Does this band we've been together for two and a half years? Where the hell does the name the maddening process come from? Where the where do you guys come up with the banding? Life itself is a fucking maddening process, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is, brother. Yeah. Life is fucking mad, man. Life changes you. You know, and every step of the way, you you know, your your face your face will suffer. The younger generation metalheads, the twenty year olds right now don't know what we know. They never experienced what we experienced. Not for nothing, but, you know, you had Opus on there, you know, a few weeks back. You know, and, and you think about making it, and you think about the rock star. Yeah. Like, that, that time is done. He, you know, he was right. You're not going to see Led Zeppelin again. You're not going to see bands like Aerosmith oh. again. You're not going to see that shit. Cherry Street is such a huge supporter of our metal scene. If, if, if our metal scene in Connecticut right now didn't have Cherry Street, we'd all be fucking scrambling for a any shows that you guys got that we should know about? Are you guys finishing up writing? What, what are you guys up to? Well, we have we have our EP release party on the 28th, which is at the spot in Buffalo, Connecticut. And we got uh, Saperna coming down to infect everybody. You, sir, can go fuck yourself! Tuesday nights, 8 p.m., Indy 180. Presented by Official Fucking New Radio. OFNR forever. But seriously, though, thank you for the flyers. Thank you for everything that you do in the scenes, your support. Official FN Radio, you're fucking awesome. No, 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 Drew. You, sir, are awesome. <laughs> and the maddening process as well. Check those guys out. That was Apostasy with Architects. They are in Shore Metal Madness Connecticut version. Yes, they are. So, catch them there. Before that, what was in my bag? Dive Bomber with Rejects Complaint. They are working on a brand new record, so prepare yourself for some more Dive Bomber. Shoutouts to cool. Chris Keys and Catfish Comstock, who had his name legally changed to Catfish, just to say fuck oh. you to Facebook. It's great. That is funny. <laughs> Of course, we've I was thinking to do the same of course, before they gave me. We, uh, we also played Fear the Masses in there with Make Me Your Leader, of course. And thanks again to Josh for being such a good sport tonight and, and playing along with us. I think he had a good time. Sounded like it. I sure had a good time. I did. I know. I was having a blast. I couldn't wait for this one. 
All righty then. It is time for the news. Brought to you by Colcock Whiskey, made with aged American bourbon and herbs like green tea, hibiscus, eucalyptus, ginger, ginkgo, and many others. Smooth taste, no whiskey burn. Take your shot, coldcockwhiskey.com. And of course, by blow paste. Unlike most lubricants that have no preservatives, or have preservatives rather, and aspartame, that naughty, naughty aspartame, blow paste no, is, is a simple way to keep your mouth clean and fresh while doing the deed. You could use blow paste for a massage, lip gloss, and of course, hand jobs. That's right, hand jobs. Blow paste is good for any cavity. Substitute your toothbrush with a dick. Blow job a day with blow paste. Cheeky cha cha dot com. Cha cha dot com. <laughs> I love that. That's the best email or web address ever. All right, it is time for the news. So let me pull up that little piece of production, shall I? It is time. Oh, yes. It is time right now for knobs. News. I find it funny that somebody's mother in law was upset that we were talking the way we were. I find it funny that I don't even know. I'm it, all buzzed up now. I, I think it's great, man. You know, that's, uh, I think it's great. I like offending people. Well, that's what Open is about, isn't it? I mean, it always kind of has been. Yeah, it should never change. That's why we're official fucking radio. I can't just start censoring myself now. And we will not. All righty. Let's do the news. It is the 10th of March, 2015, 1035. PM here at the OFNR studios. First one up is called Hump Day. A Saudi Arabian man divorced his wife after he became convinced that she loved her father's camel more than she loved him. Oh. Husband and wife were visiting a family's house and he verbally flirted with his wife to show his deep love for her. However, the wife reportedly failed to respond and noted how dear he was to her desperate loving father's camel more. He was shocked and offended and taken aback, and she uttered the statement in front of her brothers that she wanted the camel, not him. <laughs> oh, day. my God. Oh I'm my in love with this camel. Oh my I'm God. in love with the camel. Oh, my God. It is hump day. <laughs> hump day means something totally different now. One hump or two. I like two humps. Okie dokie. Next is this one's for you, Joe. This one comes from the Stagger Files. Oh, boy. Drunken Chips. At first, Nick Hess didn't really know what the fuck was going on. It was weird. I'd eat some chips, some carbs, and all of a sudden I was goofy, vulgar. I'd get really sick and stomach pains and headaches. Every day for a year, I woke up and vomit. Sometimes it would never... It would just come on over the course of the day. Sometimes, bam, I'm drunk. No alcohol had passed his lips, but not everyone believed him. At one point, his wife searched the house from top to bottom for bottles of booze. There were none. I thought everyone was just giving me a rough time until my wife filmed me and then saw it. I looked fucking drunk. So this guy has a, a disease that he can't he can't process carbohydrates. Wow. Make, makes him fucking drunk. What a lucky man. Imagine that, dude, eating some chips and getting fucking buzzed. Shit. Were you drinking on the job? Nope. But I, was... well, but I did have a bag of chips. <laughs> Giggity. Up next, drug addiction. It's not all it's cracked up to be. An Ohio man called 911 to report that his wife had stolen his cocaine. Did you want me to read that again? Yeah, I should read that again. Yeah. Ohio... A man called 911 to repeat to report that his wife had stolen his cocaine. According to cops who subsequently arrested him on drug and other charges. Robert Carlins, 39, dialed the police emergency line Wednesday night to report the cocaine theft. That's right, he called to say that his wife stole his cocaine. Last I checked, you should not call the cops to say you even have cocaine to steal. Yeah, I... I I mean, maybe I'm wrong on that one. Am I wrong? 
<laughs> when officers did arrive at Collins' residence, he apparently had a change of heart and refused to tell people why uh, police why he called 911. But they already had him on tape, so. I. I, I, I don't know, man. Call 911 on himself, man. Like, my wife stole my cocaine. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Come again. My wife. That's almost Darwin Award shit right there. Oh, did you see that video I posted of an off and R? That dude with the guitar. Oh, it's the greatest thing, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh. You just plug it in. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Again, Darwin Award. Absolutely. Up next, Gaseous Clay. New Jersey. This is right up your alley, Joe. Right in your like backyard, you my friend. Early morning gas explosion rocked a New Jersey neighborhood, left a man severely burned. Point Pleasant Beach man suffered burns over half his body when he woke to the odor of gas, turned on the bathroom light, which sparked an explosion... He was blown out through the front door of the fucking property. Rushed to the burn unit. He was in stable condition. <laughs> Could you imagine this, dude? You wake up, you smell gas, you go to turn on the light, and ba boom! There you go flying out your front door. Damn, dude, that's gotta it's suck. Cartoon like. Did you hear about that at all? Well, you know what's weird? We had a few gas explosions. Oddly enough, over like the past three weeks. So I'm, I'm not really sure which one's which anymore. I, I could have heard about it, but I don't remember it specifically. Right. But yeah, there's been some weird gas explosions happening like up in North Jersey. Hmm, one would say. All right, moving on. Moving. Jo Joe, what happens if you show, to show up to work early? What what happens to you if you show, to work, show up to work early? Uh, I don't know. Nothing? I don't know. I'm the boss. So you're the boss. So if you show up to work early, nothing happens. No benefit, no reward, no punishment either. No. Okay. If I show up to work early, they'd probably look at me funny. Like, what the fuck are you doing here so early? <laughs> because it takes me forever to get to work. Yeah. However, it's a misconception that they're called garbage men because... They work with garbage. It's actually because it's how they're treated. Garbage man Kevin McGill works for a private waste collection company in Atlanta suburb of Sandy Springs. He has a wife and two young sons as well as four dogs to feed. So it's understandable he'd try to get to work early, right? Well, the problem is it's illegal. Sandy Springs has an ordinance against collecting garbage before 7 a.m. Residents of the town, which include pro athletes and Delta executives, don't like being woken up from their beauty sleep. In fact, any time they hear the garbage truck before 7, the 911 switchboards light up like a Christmas tree because this is clearly an emergency. Clearly. Yeah. McGill was arrested after picking up trash after 5 a.m. one morning. He didn't bother bringing a lawyer to court because it was his first offense. He expected nothing more than a fine. However, he got 30 days in fucking prison. Wait, 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 wait. They arrested my man for picking up the garbage early. 30 days in prison. What the fuck is wrong with this world? 30 days in prison for picking up the garbage early. Now, see, I wouldn't blame it necessarily on him because his boss obviously let him go out knowing the law that he couldn't do it. Brothers just not walking in there grabbing some keys and going. They're going to be like, yo, what are you doing? Right. I'm going to get the garbage and they got to say no. It's you got to do it after 7 o'clock. too early. Too early, these bitches gotta need their beauty sleep because they're football stars. 30 days in jail, picking up garbage too early. Yeah, I would have shit on all their doorsteps. Bastards. Thought you might like that one. Fucking crazy. Uh, crazy, man. Yeah, it figures it's fucking Atlanta. Some Strange crazy area. Crazy shit, man. <laughs> all right. Last story that I have for this week, and I think a really good way to end the night. Okay. 919, Joe. That's the number to beat. Oh, God, yeah. 919. 
In 2004, porn actress Lisa Sparks set a new world record for having sex with the most men in a single day during the annual World Gangbang Championship in Poland. Yeah. Now stop right there. I did not even know that there was a World Gangbang Championship in Poland. Well, they are Polish. But I know now. And yes. we should go figure out how we could be like guest judges at the World Gangbang Championship in Poland. Yeah, see, I watched the video of this recent contest. I do not want to go there and be a judge. Well, this chicken... Any, go ahead. It was it was disturbing. I'm sure it was. She achieved this record by having sex with 919 men over a period of 12 hours. Yeah, she's ruined for life, man. She spent 45 seconds having sex with each man. Which is about 13.5 seconds longer than I need. Yeah. On the day Lisa Sparks won the competition by only 21 men. So previously, the previous slut got, you know, 21 less than... And the chick she beat was the one who held the record. Right. So, I guess her, her, her cootie couldn't handle it anymore. 919. Boom. It was foul. I would imagine, dude, 919 people in one puss is not cool. Uh, dude, the sounds. Oh, the sounds. Dude, I, I mean, uh, do you take a number? They now, just had everybody in line. And then every now and then they'd have some dudes blow a load on her face. Now serving number 24. <laughs> have your cock prepared. Please have your cock out at all times. If your cock right. is not out at all times, you will be disqualified from the competition and Let's you will be forced to, the back to leave. Of the line. <laughs> <laughs> you will have disgusting 918ths. Uh, anyway, and she's not even that great looking. Like, oh man, I just. And now, are all 919 of them, I mean, are they checked out? Well, they were all wearing condoms. Okay. But, but I mean, if after I you know that, like, if this isn't a question of like, you know, sometimes you go, oh, how many people were you with, babe? You know, this is, you know, that you're 900, no, you're number 917. Yeah. You know, or 918 or 919. You know what I mean? Like you're at the at end that, of the fucking yeah. line. I mean, at that point, isn't it like throwing a hot dog down a hallway? Yeah. You're like putting your arm and your leg in with it just to feel something. Yeah, like, I mean, hey, dude, you want to get your cock in here too, man? It, it, it's just, you know, I ain't getting no feeling yeah, here. Help me out here. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do in 45 seconds, really, anyway? <laughs> Next! I mean... Yeah, you're one one, one pump chump. Yeah. Uh, it, it, oh, man, the sounds. Dude, could you imagine what that room smelled like? Oh. It's just dirty snatch. Oh God, it was bad. I, I I clicked the link and I was like, oh maybe you know they'll like interview them or something. Like it wasn't an interview. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And I'm just sitting here, and it was like a, a car wreck. You couldn't look away, but you couldn't watch. It, it was horrid. When you come in on Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, "Sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays"? No. No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. <laughs> there you have it. Walking right for six months, and she can't even feel when she pees anymore. Oh, lovely. It was just foul. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> You must be the Monopoly guy. Huh. I expected the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. I was thinking the same thing. That John Denver's full of shit, man. <laughs> I, I truly love Jim Carrey. Truly. All right, right man. <laughs> well, uh, look, we're, uh, we're out of the news here. We're done there. Uh, you sound about as tired as I feel, so uh, we're gonna end. Yeah, I caught a yawn there for a minute. We're gonna end, <laughs> end off with some music, some tunage. 
Cool. Of course, uh, we got Short Mental Madness this weekend, Saturday. Do Saturday. not fucking miss this show. God damn it. Yes, I don't care how sick you get. You are coming. All over your face. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you feel better. Very soon. Kiss and make up. I, I hope you do not. You have. It might be Cyperna. It, it probably is. And so, if it's Cyperna, I'm cool with that. Everything's fine. Speaking of Cyperna, I'll get you next time. Gadget, next time. Yes. I have gotten a request. Yes. For an interview. With Cyperna? Yes. Well, of course. They're always welcome on Off and R. So we need to uh, I have dates set in, that up on a, dates a later in April. date. Yes. Uh, we've got the last two the last two Tuesdays in April are still open. The 21st and the 28th. Two Tuesdays. Correct. Two Tuesdays. Cool. You so said kind of can go fuck yourself. I plan on as soon as we hang up. <laughs> What are we uh, planning on playing out with? I was gonna do some, uh, some. I was gonna disappoint the audience. Lights fade. Yeah, man. Nice. Of course, everyone should sincerely come out to Shore Metal Madness this weekend, Saturday, the Brighton Bar. Starts at three. Doors open at three. First band on at three thirty. That's paralysis. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, man, it's gonna be a fucking great night. And I better have my bottle of fucking cold cock waiting for me. Yeah. Yeah. You can do this. Sorry, just lighting people on fire over here. No problem. I'm into it. Tomorrow night, of course, or tomorrow during the day, actually. But let me slow down and slow my roll. Tomorrow during the day, 1 o'clock, 1 p.m., it's my buddy Turbo. From the asylum last week, he had Don Jameson from that metal show on. This week, I'm not sure who he's got on, but you know it's gonna be awesome because it's fucking Turbo, man. You know what I'm saying? The motherfucker rocks hard, man. Oh, he's got good interviews, good shit on Pulse Bike Radio's The Asylum right here, at one o'clock, one to four p.m. Syndicated, courtesy of Pulse Bike Radio, and I love and respect those guys very much. At eight p.m., it's it's Keith and I. From the underground and below. I mean, I'm just here to fucking press buttons uh, and uh, and to fondle Keith's balls. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he really likes he really likes it, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny, and I think that um, I think that he might be going to the dark side. Yes, I am. See, so so there's that. On Thursday, it's modern rock mixed with metal mixed with independent tunes. Friday starts off the all independent weekend, all weekend long, nothing but independent music. Because when we say all independent music, Joe, we fucking mean all independent music all weekend long. Monday, of course, Metal Monday. Tuesday, the 90s during the day. I was listening today during the 90s, and I love it, man. I think, I think it's great. And then, uh, of course, right here at 8, 8 p.m., it's us. We're back. Yeah. 8 p.m. We've got cold cock whiskey. We got fucking Adam Greer. Hell yeah. That'll be a fun show. I'm assuming he's gonna be quite inebriated. Well, I hope I hope so and I hope not all in the same time. Cause I, you know, I just kinda wanna you know get I a, hope he's buzzed up. Get an understanding, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Believe yeah, me. I don't know. He'll uh he'll give us exactly what you want, but I hope you have a you little slur. Can go fuck yourself. Anywho, uh, and a hey and a ha and a who. Saturday. Saturday, my brother. Saturday. 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 I will see you there, my friend. You got it, brother. Everyone should tune in tomorrow night for Keith Pearson's from the underground and below. Playing Slayer this week. Last week was all Megadeth. This, this week Slayer. Next week Anthrax. Last Ooh. week Metallica. Good choices. He's doing a uh, Fatal Four March Madness metal kind of thing going on. Nice. So check it out. 
tomorrow night, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. right here on Off and R. Off and R. Holy station, then. Off and R. Bitch. And, uh, yeah. Here's some fucking white shame. White White shame. (laughs) That's great. Dude, if you look at their shirts, you can see, you can totally see light shame. That's funny. I mean, that could be lights lame. That could be lights lame. But, I mean, you know. Uh, love them dudes. Love those guys. <laughs> so Absolutely. All right. Good night, Joe. Good night, sir. You have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of the show as always, my friend. As always. And, and uh, uh, yeah. Saturday, motherfucker. Fuck yeah, dude. Be ready. Uh, I am, but my liver's not, so he's staying oh, home. Good. You don't. You don't need him anyway. See ya. See ya, man. <laughs> <laughs>